Hello, good morning. How is everybody? I have a weird little curl in my half up, half down ponytail. It's just gonna <laughs> let's try and reorganize that. Hello, 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 hello. Caroline's here. Happy Sunday, Sean and Peeps. Happy Sunday to you, Caroline. Agatha says good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, how is everybody? I have had a very strange week. <laughs> um, so I ended up postponing the Patreon Zoom call and I haven't put a video out this week. I did have one edited, but it was kind of along the lines of the last one. It was very self-promotion-ish. It was um, sort of like Patreon and I had fully intended to have another video up this weekend. So kind of like a self-promotion one and then like a regular video. and. Um, yeah, that's just not happened. But that does mean <laughs> that I should be putting out a couple of videos next week. There hasn't been a Patreon exclusive waffle either because I have just not been good this week. But I'm feeling good now. And I've been looking forward to today and hanging out with you guys. This has definitely been a high point on my calendar for this week. So I am looking forward to this one. So, yeah, yeah. Joker Clee says, a morning shine and strange weeks must be going around too, lol. I'm glad it's not just me. Not that I wish a strange week on anyone, but what's the Chinese um, curse? May you live in interesting times. <laughs> um, Agatha says, hi, Shan. Hello. Elena says, hello, lovely Shan and peeps. Hello. Caroline says, yep, definitely strange week for loads of us. Okay. Uh, Nimoy says, hello everyone, we're having a very sunny Sunday over here. Very nice. Anka says, hello, nice to see you, I missed you. Nice to see you too, welcome back. So, how is everybody? I think you can just about see there, mum's coat progress. She's just started sewing the lining to the facing, or to the, um, not to the facing, to the outer. She's just started sewing those two together. Although she reminded me yesterday she needs to put her sleeve heads in and her shoulder pads. I need to get her shoulder pads out. It's quite funny. She bought me these from like, for, um, are these both small? Small. That's nice. She bought me these for part of my stocking stuffer. <laughs> and now I'm giving them back to her. Um, but yes, so on Sunday last week, we were prepping the 1669 and I did get the pattern traced out and I got the hem facing drafted and I started doing that video and then mum came down the next day. She's taken this week off, sort of, to sew a coat with me and um, yeah, so she came down and she was like, I don't think I like it. And we'd had long discussions and gone through all of my coat patterns and she'd picked this one out. And I actually didn't want to make the 1669 until the end of this year because it's I want to make it out of a dark green wool cashmere blend that I got from Lady McElroy with the birdie satin, visco satin lining that I got from Fabwork Mills. And so she was like, I don't I, I, I don't think I like it. And I was like, okay what do you want and so she has a Karen Millen coat that she likes um that's very old and it's now way too big for her so we've got that one out and then I'd also made the Lausanne trench coat a couple of years ago not last year yeah 2022 and I've ended up giving that one to mum because it was black and I just never wear it and mum likes wearing black so um we kind of got that one out as well. And she was like, I like it, but... And so we've slimmed down the skirt, taken the pleats, the fullness that is created by the pleats out of the Les on Trench skirt. She's taken off all of the kind of like tab details and belt details. She doesn't want a belt. Oh, just an email say gone live. That's good. Um, and... Um, what else have we done to it? tweaked the size a little bit so it was it was an inch too long in the torso for mum and it was also an inch too long in the sleeves for mum so we've do, done those alterations to it 
And yeah, so she's made the lining, she's made the outer, and they're now being put together. But she does need to work on the sleeves and the sleeve sleeve caps, uh, sleeve heads, and the shoulder pads need to go in. And I've complete. I, I, I was really tired last night and I got to a point where I was like you probably want to draw the seam allowance on or the stitching line on because you're going around curves and you need to go from this seam allowance to this seam allowance because of the way you've decided to tweak the pattern she looked at me like I was talking double dutch draw the stitching line I'm like yeah draw the stri- draw the stitching line on draw the stitching line I was like yeah draw the stitching line on and she was like what do you mean like with needle and thread and I'm like no with a pen and ruler and she was like oh <laughs> it was like oh okay so um yeah yeah so we've um mum's mum's halfway through making the robson uh, not the robson trench coat the lazon trench coat and i was going to be using my cream wool and my anaconda antithesis Lena crepe which um, is their polyester crepe fabric and I kind of gave them the suggestion I was like I don't wear your Lena crepes next to my skin anymore because they just make me really bleh. but I do use them for coat linings because they're a beautiful print and they are slippery ish enough for the body of a coat and then I just use a really slippery lining for the sleeves so I was going to be doing the trench coat out of the cream wool that I'd gotten from Lady McElroy quite a few years ago now I got it back when we were in Idle Rocks and um I wanted to lengthen the coat and I just there wasn't enough wool for that so I just kind of like flailed around for a couple of days and I've ended up doing something completely different which I will show you in a minute um, but I'm going to catch up with the chat because loads of you have been chatting away whilst I've been rabbiting on at you all of that to say that the 1669 coat is going to get made only by me I'm afraid not by mum as well because she's decided she doesn't like it although I can guarantee you I'm going to make it she's going to be like oh that's nice I want one (laughs) but I'm not going to be doing it till later this year and there will be a song along for it because I started it (laughs) I got as far as um, tracing out the pattern, cutting out the pattern, and I was just starting to do the alterations. They have done the annoying thing of putting length and shorten lines on the sleeves, and then say and lengthen and shorten at the hem if you want that longer. And then there's no length and shorten lines for the bust, and the line of the bust comes here. So I need to make a muslin of that to see if I like it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't have to. I don't have to work that all out until later on this year, which I'm quite glad glad about because I'm going to be doing um, foliage canopy. I've got all of that is foliage canopy on, I think, every base that they've released it on. And I love it. I've only made up the scuba so far. I have a scuba dress out of it, but everything else is there. And I want to make it up because it's a beautiful print, but it is a very dark print and it is it has got spring green colours in there, but at the darker spectrum of the spring green colours. So I think it's probably going to be my autumn kind of thing. So the next one I'm working on is Anaconda Antithesis. And I'm very excited about that. Anyway, let me catch up on the chat. Dear Grace is here. Hi, peeps. Hope you're well. Hot and sticky weather here in Brisbane. Yes. Yes. So my, my cousin lives in Brisbane as well. So she's been updating us on, on her. <laughs> But she's she's currently um, experiencing a blackout. So she's she's not quite in Brisbane. She's just outside of Brisbane. I cannot pronounce the name of the town that she lives in. It, it's got a lot of vowels in it. Um, Caroline says, but it was a full moon last night. That could explain why Chiana was running around the house like a crazy possessed demon. She was having a funny five minutes last night. And then she did. she never wants to sleep. She likes to sleep under the quilt on top of the duvet during the day when I'm awake because it's then she can like you know have her like safe place she never does that at night but last night I think she must have been cold as well because she felt cold to the touch when she came in but she was like no I want to be I want to be under the duvet with you it's like all right so yeah I woke up and she was in the same place on top of the quilt later so yes Peter says goodness I made a live hello peeps happy Sunday good morning or good evening probably good morning for you isn't it 
think so. Vox is here. Hello, hello. I have just started watching your 2023 makes second part. And then I looked at the time. <laughs> so I've given it a thumbs up and I've paused it and I will come back to it later. Uh, Lisa says, hi, Sean. Unfortunately, I lost on court on Friday and all three of my granddaughters will be adopted. I'm beyond de devastated. Lisa, I am so sorry. I'm very, very sorry for you. Again, there's nothing that I can say that's going to make anything any better. But please do feel free to come and just chill with us and have a bit of a distraction. But I'm so, so sorry. Uh, Agatha says, crazy week here too. Little Miss was off to school two days due to problems with power. Oh, no good. Johanna says, good morning. Haven't made a live in a while. Glad to see everyone. Nice to see you too. Brittany G says, I hope you will sew the charm patterns, uh, the charm patterns coat. Yes. With some alterations, but yes, this is a princess coat. That uh, my third one. <laughs> Gig Racer says, sorry to hear that, Lisa. Jojo says, woohoo, happy Sunday. Hope you're all well. I've had an odd week too. Harry and Ron, the kitties, have taken to waking me up at stupid o'clock in the morning every day, 5.13 a.m. today. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. And then um, Ron gave you a heart attack by disappearing, didn't she? How dare she? How very dare she? Uh, Nimoy says, I've been pretty much spent this week recovering from the one before. Dancing five days in a row, followed by all the excitement was a bit much. <laughs> Lisa says, oh, did I miss something already? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Good Grace says, sorry to hear that to Lisa. Lisa says, thank you. Nimoy says, now I'm itching to get back into the swing of things. Yes. And Anna says, Lisa, I'm so sorry that happened. And Ari says, um, for Lisa, ouch, I'm sorry, so sorry for you. Lisa says, me too, Alana. The pain, the pain is so bad, I, can't, I feel like I can't breathe. Jojo says, oh, Lisa, sending hugs and strength to you, lo uh, love, strength, love to you. I'm so sorry to hear that. And Lisa says, thank you to Inari and Jojo. Uh, Gig Rosa says, I too have had an odd week, intermittently sick and receiving a call from my abusive ex from 16 years ago out of the blue today. He found my number and called to apologise for treating me badly. Ooh, that's, ooh. Was that to make you feel better or to make himself feel better? Um, yes. How do you feel? Jane says, good morning all, good morning. Elena says, Lisa, sending you all the hugs and strength that you need. If you could ask any, ask the new family to stay in touch with you. My husband was allowed to be new, was allowed to be new family to be in the touch with biological one. Lisa says to Elena, yeah, the Guardian said, if possible, there should be post-adoption contact. Oh, that's, that's, that's something, that's something. Nimoy says to Good Grace, wow, apologies, it seems... Always seems nice, but it's kind of about him being forgiven. Just leaving you alone in your peace would have been much better, much more in your favour. They don't really change, do they? No. Joker Clee says, well, it was a full moon last night too. Yes, that's explaining a lot. <laughs> Elena says to Lisa, so there is hope for you that you didn't lose them completely. And Ari says, uh, for Lisa, sending you a comfortable virtual hug. And Gig Grace says to Nimue, exactly. Agatha says, my cats were demons every night last week. <laughs> Lisa says, thank you. You are also kind. Thank you. MJB says, evening peeps. Good evening. Rachel Lynn says, good morning all. I hope it's been a, it's been a week. If I don't comment, hopefully I've fallen back asleep. My daughter has a Viola performance today and she woke up at 4.30 a.m. because of nerves. Poor thing. Oh, bless her. Well, good luck. And yes, please do go back to sleep. Hopefully my monotonous tones will send you into a slumberland. <laughs> Aaron says, good morning from Virginia. Good morning. Box says, thank you. Good Grace says to Jojo, I think your kittens have been conspiring with my 14-month-old pup who has decided to play anywhere between 3 to 4 a.m., including house and furniture destruction. Oh, wow. Box says, I'm going to grab a big cappuccino so I can just sit and enjoy the hangout night. Christine says, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is okay. Hugs for Lisa. And Lisa says, thanks to Christine. Jojo says, yes, the little minx was missing for 18 hours and came back screaming at the back door at 2 a.m. Does she apologise for scaring me half to death? Of course not. No, why would she? <laughs> why would she? Agatha said, last night, cats woke me up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m., and they're still alive, but <laughs> they're still alive, but they were getting close to getting skinned alive. They do make fabulous slippers. I keep telling Chiana that, and she doesn't believe me, but she would make a fab. In fact, 
she she is quite chubs so she probably make a pair of slippers to be fair um but yeah no she she uh, eight o'clock this morning she was just like I need to I need to be up and she's gotten into a habit of um she comes and sort of she doesn't pat me on the face very much because she knows if she does she gets cuddled and she doesn't want that she wants me upright so that I can watch her sleep so she's gotten into the habit of plucking things and I've got um, these cubes, I've got these as my bedside tables and I've got two drawers and then I've got the little um, fabric covered boxes that are like two pounds in the bottom and that's got my blankets in it and I let her pluck that and use that as a cat tree because she's got a cat tree, she's got like a full high, ceil- high, floor to ceiling high cat tree and she does use it but not very frequently. Um, but I, yeah, I let her use these boxes, the drone boxes, because they're two pounds each. I have a bunch spare because I didn't use a bunch down here. And I can turn them around. So she's destroyed one side down to the cardboard. <laughs> she's done this side. So I need to put, put a new one in there for her. But I don't mind her plucking that. So I ignore that. So she started finding other things to pluck. And I have a wall of uh, bookcases, which has got my shoes, my bags, my TV at the end of my bed. And I've got my boots along the bottom. And she started plucking my boots. And that immediately gets me up. So I've had to protect my boots with a blanket tucked in over them. And then a pillow tucked in over because the blanket wasn't quite long enough. And it's just like, it's, it's like I, I, I do it because I don't want my boots to get destroyed. But it, obviously, it's not overly aesthetically pleasing either. And it's just like, mm. and so I've had to, there's, there's strategic places that I have to Chiana proof around the bedroom so that I, um, she won't pluck things to wake me up. And she's worked this out. And so she now has started plucking the headboard of my velvet bed. The trouble with that one is it's close to grabbing hands. And so I'm trying to teach her that she does that. She immediately gets cuddled because she doesn't like corporal cuddling. Um, She tolerates it, which is good for me. But yeah, she doesn't overly enjoy that one. So she's using that as a very much a last resort. But yeah. You got just, yeah. Yeah, she would make a great slipper. Um, Agatha says, my daughter's cat's on the plus side. She loves sleeping on my feet. Perfect slippers. Ooh. Yeah, Chiana very, she's got, she's kind of gotten into the habit of sleeping next to me rather than on me. But every now and again, she'll be like, no, I want the lap. And so she has the lap. Oh, do you guys remember last week when I was saying that I've just finished Bones and I don't know what to watch next? And I was just like, oh, I tried CL Team and I didn't really like it. I'm now halfway through season five of SEAL Team from this week. <laughs> I got, I got, I got caught up in it. I did. I got caught up in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is not lighthearted at all. It's made me cry so many times. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been powering my way through that. So yes, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, Joanne says, so clever to make gorgeous coats. Well done. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jane says, starting a to sew a hopefully wearable toile of the Kaya Cotigan. It's more of a knit blazer than a Cotigan. Mm, interesting. Lisa says, I've been unable to sleep since last April after the girls were taken into foster care. This morning I woke up at 3 a.m. So Larry, my foster cat, and I watched Benadorm on Netflix at 3 a.m. Oh, cute, 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 foster kitty, keeping you company. Oh. Uh, Agatha says, rainbows loves to knock down bins. Rainbows is your cat and knocking down bins, that, oh, don't give Chiana ideas. Uh, I've had to put my bin on a step stool in my room because um, our cleaner puts a plastic bag in it, which is great. You know, it is great. I, I don't put anything. Um, it's a it's a compostable uh, black bin liner before anybody says anything. It's a compostable one. It's meant to decay. It's not plastic plastic. Um, but Chiana thinks they taste delicious. And if it's left on the floor, she'll lick it. And that's so she gets very into the zone when she's doing that. So that's why that bin has to be up on the side. But hopefully she won't get it into her head. Start pushing that off. 
Yeah, I won't say that in front of her, just in case. Jojo says to Gig Racer, there is definitely something in the water when it comes to animals being crazy little darlings. <laughs> darlings, yes. Gig Racer says, uh, Rio has now eaten two sofas during the night, thankfully the old ones, but still, I keep, t- keep telling home I will channel Monty Burns uh, and he would make a good vesk, best husky fur and all. <laughs> Joker Clee says, hey, it's David Boreanaz, lol. I know, right? I'm really enjoying it. Uh, Agatha says, I started watching Sons of Anarchy again. I don't know if I could put myself through that. I loved Sons of Anarchy. I thought it was absolutely brilliant, but oh my goodness, it was horrific. And I don't know if I could watch. I don't know if I could watch it again. I uh, Seal Team is 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 yeah. It's it's done. Oh, I don't think I could watch um, Sons of Anarchy again. Joker Clear says, "What's not to like?" Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, Lisa says, "Larry is my 59th foster kitty." <gasps> Larry, cute. Uh, Gig Racer says, agreed with Joker Clues. Agatha says, yes, she is my daughter's cat. She has special affection to the bin under my soda. desk. Oh, yeah. Um, she had to come down here the other day on Wednesday because we had a guy come in and fix my windows. Like, my, my windows basically just didn't shut. And if there was any kind of wind, I used to, I had some peacock feathers in a vase next to it and you could just see them going. And then finally Dad put my blind up, which is very kind of him and um that started like flapping in the wind and i i could feel it it was cold in my room even if the radiators were on and so i used to just turn the radiator off and like put as many clothes on as possible and get under the davit because brr. um but yeah the when uh, so a friend of my mum's had has bought a new house and she had sliding doors in her bedroom onto a flat roof and it just kept leaking and so she had them removed and had new ones put in. And it turns out when they, she had them removed, they just weren't installed properly, which given that this was an, um, she, when she, oh, hello, what's going on in my voice? That she bought the house um, brand newly refurbished. They'd done a really shoddy job of that. Um, but when they took it out, uh, dad's redoing the back garden at the moment. And it currently looks like a salvage yard still. Front garden looks good, but the backyard garden, not so much um but yeah um it, it, dad's was dad was like can I have the windows if they're just going to the tip can I have the windows for his his makeshift kind of greenhousey potting shed gardeny bit at the back and the lady said absolutely and the guys were like sure we're going to tell we were just going to take them to the tip to dump them so we can take them to your house to put them in and they arrived without the glass in and got put into place and then it was too um they bought the glass but it was too uh wet on the day or they had another job to do or something so they had dad rebooked them basically to come and reinstall the glass and they did that the other day and when they did they looked at my windows and the guy was like yeah these are terrible like you might as well just have the windows open um in these new hinges so he came on what was supposed to be 9 a.m on on wednesday morning and i i do wake up about seven because mom and dad wake up about seven but I'm usually kind of slightly comatose and I haven't been sleeping very well. So I was, she and I got up at like quarter to nine because he was supposed to be here for nine o'clock and then he was like an hour and a half late. And so she and I just like, uh. but we came down here to um, just be out of the way whilst he was fixing it because he had to take the entire window off and like put new new hinges on the windows. And so Chiana would have would have like hated it and, and either tried to like, uh, beat him up or get out so she came down here and then the entire time I'm just like don't eat thread don't eat thread don't eat thread <laughs> following her around and trying to make sure that she didn't hurt herself down here but she didn't and it was fine and um yeah she um eventually decided that okay it's not it's not too bad here and sort of held up out on she found she kept looking at the cubes because she when she was a kitten she used to sleep in the cubes um but there was no there's no cube that's got enough room for chiana and the fabric um so she ended up going under the table and sleeping on the fabric under the table (laughs) bless her but oh yeah that was an early start uh mjb says there must be something in the air my two darling dogs are terrors at the moment miss taffeta was caught eating the corner of the coffee table yesterday oh wow Jojo says, to be fair, Chiana would 
make a really warm winter hat a worthy outcome for boot and headboard plucking I feel <laughs> yeah she would make a great hat <laughs> Joker Clue says um Tony Trucks ain't hard on the eyes either uh she plays Lisa Davis oh FYI thank you yes um yeah Agatha says what can I say guys with tattoos yeah <laughs> Peter says another Rio we have a rescue cat named after the Olympics by the rescue centre. Not much scratching, but plenty of yodelling this morning. <laughs> six, six, eleven a.m. Oh, that's that's early. So it says, I know you guys are talking about animals terrorising your homes, but man, I have been wanting a fluffy pet to snuggle so badly. Oh, I wouldn't be without my one. She has, she's amazing. Um, yeah, for as much as I'm bitching about all the things and her quirks, I've like, you know, I've worked out ways around it. And at the end of the day. I don't mind. So, yeah, I'd much rather have her. Um, Teresa says, I wonder if anyone has been has made the lovely dress PDF pattern from Dress of Behind the Scenes. It's a Zimmerman dress dupe. It was uh, pictured on the Peeps group a few days ago. I haven't. I probably won't because um, I don't like the sleeves being tight at the top and then belling out is absolutely gorgeous and she is very clever to kind of like because she did a pink version a little while ago and was just like this is you know I can draw for myself but I don't know how to um grade patterns so I'm going to go and learn that and I'm going to learn how to digitize them and then I'll come back and she came back with the blue one um and it was amazing so like she's taught herself all of these skills which to me is just like mind blown um I think it's absolutely gorgeous but I don't wear many dresses and I don't like the, um, the like I say, the sleeves that way. And honestly, I have other patterns. I'm trying to be so good. The new Vogue patterns that have come out, I'm quite excited. There's quite a few that I'm quite excited about and I don't have anything like them in my stash, I don't think, but I'm going to be really strict about that. But um, it's absolutely gorgeous, Teresa. I think it's very, very lovely. I won't be making it because I don't think it's right for me, but I'm so impressed that A, she did that and then B, like just learned to do all those things to release the pattern. It was just like mind blowing. Um, Peter says yodeling, yowling, <laughs> either. Gianna, when she's annoyed, will do the ow, 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 ow thing. So yeah. Okay, Grace says Sarah, to Sarah, my other husky is four and an angel. She's tiny for a husky and is red and white. She's super snuggly and receives no threats to be made into vests. She grew out of destruction mode at three years old. Very cute. Johanna says, hello, beautiful. I'm just resurfacing after my kid's 10th birthday sleepover party. Just hooked some caffeine to my veins. Nice. Very nice. Good Rosa says, poor Chiana, drived, deprived of cube space. I know. I did think about getting some fabric out so she could get into a cube, but I knew that if I did that, it would be the wrong cube. And so I didn't bother <laughs> because I would have like completely like, you know, made room for her and she'd have been like, no, I don't want that one. So, no. Uh, Johanna says, what, uh, what are you making? The Getty Princess cut. And I'm so close. So close. It's not been pressed um yet and um that is kind of really I need to do some understitching and then pressing is the next um thing after the understitching um so I think what I'm going to try and do with you guys today is do the understitching sew up the front do that understitching sew up the hem turn it through and then if we are still waffling, do some self-covered buttons for it. Because if I have to press, I have to go over there and just basically turn my back on you. And there's a good hour's worth of pressing in here if I want to get it done right. So, yeah. Uh, Joker Clue says, I've been chewing my way through Blue Bloods lately, interspersed with episodes of Chicago PD, Moonshiners, Mountain Men, Health Kitchen and Swamp People, waiting on all the new seasons to start. Yes. Rachel says, did you see the early spring Vogue release? 2000 is your wrap dress. I Is 2000 the DVF um, re-release? I, have, I, I haven't paid much attention to it, but um, like the, the, I haven't got in in great detail. I skimmed through it the other day because I was watching an episode of SEAL Team. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I had to that had, that had to have attention paid. This is the trouble when um, when I watch something new that I don't know um, well, I pay attention to it, and so I don't really get a lot of other things done. So yeah. Um, and Rachel then says it is the DVF dress. I'm really surprised um, that that got re-released, honestly, because uh, there was, you know, it was a licensed pattern from the Diamond Ball Um And, um, you know, they must have, the the, the, the license to, re, to reissue that, that, that must have been an interesting process. I I did look at the line drawings and to me, it looks very similar to a Butterick pattern that I already own. And I'm not sure that I'm going to buy it because I would be buying it just for the DVF name. Um, let me let me have another look at it because. So it was Vogue. It'd help if I could spell Vogue, wouldn't it? Okay, no. Someone is doing drilling work in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Okay, except all. Oh, they're on sale this week. Some of them. New Look, Nomi, and Butterick are on sale. Yeah. Um, where's the line drawings? There they are. It is a beautiful dress. And if you don't have a wrap dress that you love in your stash, 100% grab it because it is a beautiful dress. Uh, but <laughs> can I find, can I find? Oh no, it's not exact. No, it's not exactly the same. It's not exactly the same. There were more options on this one. Okay, so this one has darts coming up from the waist to the bust, and this one has darts coming from the side seam to the bust. And the no, that this one's got the turn back collars as cuffs as well. Although this one's sleeves don't go all the way down to the wrist, whereas this one's do. I don't know. This one has. Uh, shoulder darts at the back and this one the butterick one does not so there are differences but honestly I would be buying that pattern for the name and I have this one I've not made this one yet we all know that the eve dress has my heart But there were a couple of other ones in that Vogue one that I liked. And if it goes on sale and I need to um, get over the $75 mark for patterns, then, you know, if it's on sale, I'll definitely get it. But it's one of those ones where it's just like, I'm buying this because it's got the DVF name on it for no other reason. So, yeah. Is anyone else going to get it? The new McCall's came out as well, I think. McCall's used to be my favourite of the three, and it's switching to Vogue now, um, for sure. The McCall's ones have been really disappointing recently. Uh, Agatha says, I love a few of the Vogue too, but I got a big bag of vintage patterns from a friend, so I need to check those first. Nice. Elena says, sewing today? I don't believe you. I know, right? Rachel Lynn says, it is. MJB says, I'm avoiding looking at the new Vogue patterns. I need to sew the patterns I already have. It helps that we are looking at autumn, not spring. Agatha says it's quite similar to one of the patterns that was with Love Sewing Magazine for a few years ago. And Nimoy says, I'm off to lunch for a bit. See you later. Enjoy. And Ari says, enjoy your lunch, Nimoy. 
And JB says, I've just made that butterick wrap, wrap pattern. I hate the closure. Uh, hooks and eyes. Uh, I need to add some ties. Yeah, if it's hooks and eyes, I won't do it. I, I will add in proper ties and I'll add in a buttonhole on the side to feed the tie through. I don't like ones that hook and eye shut. I want to be able, I, I feel more secure if I can tie it in a bow. <laughs> it just feels better to me. Right, okay. So I've done some um, slight tweaks to this pattern. I've added on cuffs, which, so you can see this, this bit here. I can't see it in real life looking at it, but it shows up in the mirror and like, in on on um i can see it like the ridge from the uh from the seam allowance i can i can i can really see it but i can't looking at it like that it's really weird but i've got these cuffs from a butterick pattern and i'm going to add a little self-covered button there to hold those on and then i've made the skirt a high-low skirt only by two inch difference from the front to the back and that was purely and simply because I had a limited amount of fabric. So this is a shorter peplum um, coat. Now I've got to try and get in between the layers to do some under stitching, which hopefully we can do. Oh, good grief. <laughs> I'm glad this does not have um, a giant skirt on it because that would be nigh on impossible. Okay. Oh, good grief. Am I going to be able to do this? Do you know what? I don't think I am and I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I'm just going to try and press it because I've done that with my other ones. I will I will understitch the um, fronts though because that will help those stay down but the collar I'm going to cheat and just not. I'm sorry. I know I'm bad. That means I need to turn everything through and pin it all together to sew it all together. So let's get that done. Shall we? Oh, get itchy nose. Um, Aaron says, yeah, unequivocally, I would buy the DBF pattern. Nice. I would love to have got my hands on the original because that thing is worth some money now. And me being me, I would have. It wouldn't be factory folded, but it would be traced, so it would still be in one piece. Oh, itchy nails! I've got some trouble with this. You end up with fluff everywhere. And Mum's making a black coat, and I'm making a cream coat at the same time. So we're getting like the opposite coloured fluffs all over our coats. It's hilarious. Uh, B. Grace says, I love the look of the Vogue wrap dress, but could I, but I doubt it would be released in larger plus sizes. Oh, yeah. They really, I just, for all these companies that are like, oh, you need a whole new block and you cut, you know, like, I get, I get that it's an expense, but there's just such a large market out there. And it's the same for the smaller sizes as well. It's just like, why? why not invest? And I'm saying this from somebody who has no idea how much time and effort it co costs to do that kind of thing. But you would think someone like Vogue or the Simplicity Patterns would spend money on designing and perfecting a larger block and a smaller block to draft from for their patterns because it's just so short-sighted to not cater to all of the markets. Like, Um, Jojo says, I love the DVF dress, but to have similar patterns like you, I'd be buying it for the sake of it. Yeah, I like, like I say, I'm not ruling that out because if they have a sale and um, I cave, as we know that I probably will, um, 
Yeah. You know, I mean, Elena, actual sewing is going to happen. Um, Agatha says, nope, have a good few wrap dresses patterns in my stash already. Yeah, same. I have, I have like nine or ten, I think. Gig Racer says, oh my, that coat's going to be stunning. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's going to go with this collection. Uh, we shall see. Um, Joker Clue says, uh-oh, I hear the demanding sounds of Minion Man. Lol, be right back. Good luck with that. Jojo says, oh my god, are you actually throwing blimey? I know, right? Uh, Michelle is here. Hello, hello. Uh, Elena says, I'm so sorry I have to leave you, but my boys are demanding food and it's my turn to cook. Enjoy. Agatha says, enjoy, Elena. In our house, it's always my turn to cook. By choice, hubby makes too much mess. <laughs> Lol. Um, Susan says, hi, Sean and peeps. I have an original DVF pattern, single size 14. Found it in a bundle of patterns from a deceased estate. A deceased estate. Oh, very funky. I like that. Anari says for Elena, um, enjoy the cooking. Caroline says, if if a smaller independent company can do multiple blocks, it's nuts that the big ones can't. Yeah. Mim says, hello, Sean. How are you? Ooh, what do I see? Almost saying, I know, right? Key Racer says, plus they seem to think that plus size equals bigger everywhere, particularly in the waist and hips. Some of us are still hourglasses. One thing that generally don't do is add enough to the biceps on sleeves. Yeah. Joker Clue says, whew, crisis averted. All he needed was a new place to sleep that wasn't quite as warm as mummy's arms under her mountain of blankets. <laughs> oh. Right, let's, let's wrestle this onto the sewing machine and get this little bit done. Then we can attempt to do some unstitching. someone's going at like something with a chainsaw at the back so Joker Clee says oh I read that one Caroline says good grace is so true Inari says I have a craving for tacos with hot sauce I bought my um medicinal mini eggs down they um they some, somehow have put that that's a family pack on the on the on the on the box and it's just like no, no, it's a shan size pack. What family? What is this nonsense? So, yeah, can't understand that. Jojo says, Mun tacos, drools. And Inari says, Yet, it is too early to eat. Uh, if you're hungry, you can eat. So I don't want to sew. That little bit, because I'm going to try and get in and understitch this piece, if I possibly can. My bag of stuff has not got enough stuff in it yet to stay upright, so it keeps closing on itself. And that didn't work. Never mind. Joker Clee says, no, no, family pack are the only available at places like Costco and wholesale clubs, maybe Sam's Club. I'm guessing you're meaning like kilo bags. Again, I would argue that's a shan shape pack, but 
um, Vic Grace says, ooh, mini eggs, yum. Definitely not family pack size, more like daily grazing size. Exactly. I don't know. Like the smaller ones. I don't. I, that just seems silly. The, no. Yeah. Uh, Sarah says, does anyone, does anyone else find, find the arm side sleeve head on the big four restrictive? Like I can't move my arms forward very good if I cut the pat arm side sleeves how they have it on the pattern. I found that when that happens to me, I've done the shoulders a little too low. The shoulders aren't sitting high enough. If I get the shoulders in the right place, then the range of movement is pretty good. But I also much prefer big bishopy sleeves, as you guys know, over tighter sleeves. And I don't tend to wear the tighter sleeve things because it restricts my movement. But I find that it restricts my movement in the like it was going to restrict my movement however it had been sewn kind of thing, if that makes sense. Uh, right, let's see. Can I get in here? Ooh, don't want to unplug you. Coat's trying to, the coat's trying to sabotage you guys. No. Let's see. Okay. Uh, no, <laughs> really stitched on the wrong side. That would have been bad. Okay. Uh, Nari says it's 4.12 in the morning where I am at. And your grace says, goodness, Nari, that's far too early to be conscious willingly. I know, right? It should be bedtime not awake time <laughs> as in like I would stay up till that time um, and then go to bed that's my usual modus operandi uh good graces I uh, read that one Inara says I'm glad you have chocolate to nosh on mm -hmm. I get very antsy if I haven't got any chocolate in the house like not that I have to I, I also have this terrible habit of eating everything that I have in the house so I kind of have this balancing act of I can't stock up because if I do then I'm just like I could eat it um, but if I don't have anything in the house, it's just like, okay, now I'm starving, even though I'm not at all. It's just my brain is weird. My brain is weird. We know this. We, we know that I have a weird brain. Um, Joker Clee says, kilo bags, lol, you're cute. I mean, the smallest Bavarian size bags, lol. You know, the ones where they're big enough to wipe out the cocoa product uh, production throughout the Amazon for a couple of years. <gasps> They do bags that size. That's also a Sean size bag. Maybe literally. You know, you can keep saying you eat my body weight in chocolate. Do they sell bags that I could actually do that? I love it. <laughs> Jojo says, family pack my ass. I can demolish that pack size in one sitting. Joker Cleese says, which of us can't, Jojo? Lol. Good Grocer says, Joker Cleese, 100%. Monica says, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Michelle says, good morning, lovely peeps. What are we working on? I'm making a tablet book sleeve today. Presents for my friends from Star Wars by Brick. I am trying to work on the coat that I have nearly finished. I am attempting to do some understitching. And then I say attempting. Because it is very much an attempt. We are current there. Very close to being finished with this one. My second coat of the year. And then the next thing I'm working on is the 9076. I promise. I swear that dress is cursed. Okay, so this coat's interesting because there's a break point um, where you uh, have to switch your understitching from one side to the other because of how the collar goes in. Okay. I must make sure not to stitch past that 
right point, which is there. Yeah, this um this wool uh, was a remnant that I got from Lady McElroy quite a while ago, and it's actually somehow managed to get sun damaged. Um, and I have had this one for a while, and I'm wondering because none of my other fabrics that have been stored in here have been sun damaged. I don't, they don't get direct sunlight on them ever, um, because they are we are north facing. The only windows we have are over there, and uh, yeah, none of the other fabrics that I've had, and I get them out and move them around regularly, as you guys know, um, but none of them have got sun damage on them. So I'm thinking the sun damage on this one, it was two very thin lines that were perfectly placed where I fold the fabric. So it, I know it's happened since I got it. I'm guessing that happened when I had this fabric. I possibly had it at the shop. I might have had it for that long. I'm not sure. But anyway. They've got a little bit of sun damage on them, so I had to cut around that, which is fine because I, you know, I did it on the like the inside cuff. There's sun damage on the ins, you know, the bits that I couldn't completely just ignore because I was limited on fabric as well. Um, there was a point to that story. Oh my god, my brain. What was that? What was the thing? I can't remember what the, what the point of that story was. Um, but yeah, I had a very limited amount of fabric, so that's why I made this coat. What? Why did that start? I've literally lost the plot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, well, never mind. Moving swiftly on. What have I missed in the chat? Um... Joker Clee says that's supposed to be a small Bavarian village size lol. Did I read that wrong or did you? Small Bavarian. <laughs> Not a Bavarian person. Bavarian Bavarian village. Okay, glad that you cleared that up. <laughs> Gigwesa says, I forgot that I had half a large variety tray of Ferrero Rocher I got for Christmas in the fridge. Thanks for triggering that reminder. How on earth did you forget that? Wow. Like, well, I, Dad went out to the shops the other day and was like, what do you want? And I said, please, may I have mini eggs? And he looked at me because he can't have mini eggs. And I was like, I know, I'm sorry, but I really am craving them at the moment. And he's like, okay, fine. And then he came back and he couldn't find the bags of mini eggs. I'd asked for the family Sean size bag. And he bought me an Easter egg, a mini eggs Easter egg. And he's like, that's all I could find. Like, oh, Papa, that's so cute. So I've had my first Easter egg of this year as well. <laughs> Had mini eggs on the inside. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Keto's going really well. I really I really need to make an effort to make myself some like keto treats like chocolate covered strawberries or something like that. And um I mean I used to when I was being really strict with keto this sort of time last year I would have a punnet of the extra sweet strawberries from test as the co-op as my treat and they were three pounds and that bag was three pounds 75 so even though they're expensive it would be cheaper to have the strawberries and it'd be better for me and I love the strawberries I'll have to see if they've got the extra street sweet strawberries in because they are delicious. I've um, gone, decided to go down the press stud route for this coat as well, rather than try and do bound buttonholes or um, regular buttonholes through these these amount of layers of wool. I'm really enjoying the press studs on my red coat. I like it. Um, it's working really well for me and I was worried with the bound buttonholes in this coat that things would show through because it is just cream wool. I'm kind of worried that you can see the pocket bags. 
I'll have to try it on for you guys in a minute and see if you can see the pocket bags. Because if you can, it's not too late for me to take them out and just sew the, sh sew the sides shut. And not have pockets in this coat. And as much as I would love to have pockets with cream things, I don't like it when you can see like the outlines of, under, you know, the underneath of outlines of things. Okay. So we've got that done. Do you need to trim the seam allowance here? I need to trim. Now yeah, let's do the other side. I'm kind of just aiming at the beginning. Although I have to say, I am tidier than my mother. Her area over there, which is little bits of stuff all over the floor. And I said to her, I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And she's like, oh, it gets everywhere. It's like, my, look at my area, look at your area. She's like, it's fine. It's like, I know it's fine, but it's just funny. Stuff everywhere. I just need to sew up a little bit on this side and then under stitch and then I can go around and sew up the hem and turn the coat through which is exciting catch up with the chat um, let's see. Joker Clear says, apparently my fingers aren't keeping up with my humour this morning. <laughs> Lol. And Joanne says, hello, Michelle. I'm making a bento pattern quilt. Ooh, pretty. Caroline says, just remembered my dark chalk brazils and almonds. Be right back. <laughs> Jojo says, Joker Clear's lol. It's not an exclusive club in the least. Michelle, swells. Michelle says, wow, I see actual sewing. I know, right? Oh, hello. And can I? There we go. Yeah. Um, Sarah says, I'm not a huge chocolate person, more a chips gal, but between this conversation and that we went to see Wonka in the theatres Friday, I've got a bit of a craving. Sorry. Simone says, hello, peeps. Hello. Monica says, is the coat that you were cutting out last Sunday? No. No, this is a totally different coat. <laughs> Mum decided she didn't want to do the 1669. So she's doing the Lausanne trench coat instead, which you can see right there. And I am doing the princess coat, which I've almost finished. Sarah says, I have to open some of my Christmas treats. Nice. Sarah, I'm always like, if I have sweet things in the house, I want savory. And if I have savory things in the house, I want sweet. I always crave what I don't have. And I don't know what that says about my brain. But I also can't have a stock of things in the house because if I do, my brain says, eat them, eat them all. And I will. So, yes. And Ari says, for good grace, sir, about an hour before this hangout, I had a pre-apocalyptic nightmare. Um, be glad you're not a, an American. I have a feeling this dream is actually uh, a premonition. Oh, don't, don't. The world is just getting to a point of, like, what is going on? And, yeah, I need my escapism. Um Christine says the hi-fi shop my husband goes to had bought something like five kilograms of mini eggs home from travels abroad. I've never enjoyed a visit there so much. <laughs> Michelle says I randomly bought home a Cadbury whole nut on Friday. Mm, I might have to have a bit for breakfast. <laughs> Apparently I'm a terrible influence. Good Grace says to Sarah, same. I generally prefer savoury, but I do love good quality chocolate too. But I do have about six large bags of chips in the pantry and a couple of small wheels of camembert and brie in the fridge. Oh, we had camembert for New Year's Eve. It was delicious. Mum's on her way down. 
Jojo says to Gig Racer, you forgot about Ferrero Rocher. Uh, that does not compute. How have they survived this long? There's another treat. I can I can literally inhale the same. Joker Clee says, hmm, rummage through secret secret drawer for chocolate while noshing on gummy treats. Hmm, lint chocolate. I like this. Now to choose between strawberry raspberry or intense mint. They do a strawberry one? I need that. Mum's here. I'm trying to catch up with the chat. I'm very behind because I'm doing some sewing and they're all horrified by actual sewing. Sewing? Yeah. I'm sewing. Yes. Um, Michelle says, mini eggs will be on the island Bermuda around February. I can't wait. They only come out annually. I know, right? And then, so in the winter, it snowballs. And then the minute that, like, the minute that Christmas was done, they had uh, Easter eggs in. Um, so you need to put your shoulder caps and uh, shoulder pads and sleeve heads in now. I'd forgotten. I should have got you to do it yesterday Ooh. before you sewed that bit in. But I'm glad we stopped when we did because my brain was, was tired as well. How do I do this? Okay, you, get, you have to let me catch up with the chat and finish yes, my line of stitching and then... <laughs> um. Agatha says, it happens in my house that the chocolate was out of use by date, but never happened to ice cream. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance of chocolate going out of date in this house. Good Grace says, Jojo, I love chocolate, but I can eat a bit and then put it in the fridge and forget about it. I found some that I had stashed and was expired. Usually my history just eats um, and replaces. Usually my history just eats and replaces it for me. Your history? Husband? Your husband? Um... Yeah, no, I don't forget about chocolate. Mum wants some Ferrero Rocher in, um, yeah, you can just leave it like that. <laughs> she wants to do it now. And I, let me just finish you this. Carry on. You carry on. I've got to open the packet. You're going to need to do the sleeve heads first. It'll be easier, yeah. What, these? Yeah, you, you need to put your glasses back on as well. Yes, though. Find the middle of those. Mark it with a pin. Um, Joker Clue says if I can't find strawberries this year before they disappear from the patches I want to can about 50 pints of them preferably double that but that's the story for another day lol mm, strawberries my hubby and I are completely opposite if we if there are treats in the house he must eat it within a week but I prefer to wait till I want something Some, sometimes treats sit for weeks before I open them sometimes he gets in my treats angry face <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing about not having a partner. I don't have to worry about them stealing my food. <laughs> Sean doesn't share food. Um, Brittany says, Lily's Chocolates Keto Friendly is available here in the US and I've melted it down to make peanut butter cups, chocolate covered nuts, etc. Highly recommend. Ooh, nice. Gig Racer says, same with Sarah. Joji Klee says, uh, oh, yeah. Great, now I'm going to have to chew on the ear of the local grocers to see if you can get the good Lausanne ice cream back in, specifically their uh, thin, tin Lizzie cheesecake flavour. Nice. And Ari says for Jojo, makes there's a, there's a drooling jo there's a drooling emoji. Gig Racer says to Jojo, my husband eats and replaces chocolate. Maybe I should go and eat some because clearly I can't type it and it could be a symptom of hyperglycemia. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. Uh, Mim says, Sean, did you interline the coat? I did. Caroline says, it was, it, I was good. I just had one of each. Nice. Catherine says, afternoon all. Hello. Michelle says, Michelle says, Sean is the best kind of bad, the best kind of influence <laughs> with a devil face. Fabric and chocolate. Yes. Good Grace says, also bless your dad, Sean. How sweet to bring you an Easter egg. I know, right? That was the sweetest thing. You need to measure, Mum. You can't, not like that. You need to measure the coat, which you can't do until we've turned it through. I'm sorry, I'm nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> she does this as well when I'm like, could, could you just be quiet for a minute whilst I film a bit? And she's like, yeah, sure. And then she starts ferreting around back there and doing things. And she, she turns the machine on and it's suddenly like, <laughs> and she's like, the look on her face though, she's like, she's so guilty. She's like, I know I've done something wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, we're waiting for it. Precious, come on. Precious. Being very slow. She's been very slow. Come on, Nina. <laughs> Precious. 
That was that was weird. It's never been that silent when you turn it. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Hello, Jane. Precious is ready to go. <laughs> She's named her same she Precious. <laughs> but yeah. She'll, so I'll be. I, I like a, a couple of people got very upset with me for asking you to be quiet in the background of my videos. I know, I remember that. And um, it was like, okay, but honestly, one of the complaints I get the most often from other sew alongs is like, oh, that background noise is so annoying. So it's just I'm now hyper aware of it. So I said, to the, you know, I will say to mum, can I just have two minutes whilst I sew something? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she sort of poodles around in the background doing stuff. And I'm like, the microphone on this camera is so sensitive. Stop everything. She's like, I just turned the machine on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mother. <laughs> um, Joker Clear says, hi, mom. It's all, all capitals. He was shouting at you. Hi. <laughs> Lynn says, oh, I've just turned, tuned in. And yeah, the princess coat, is that the red fabric? Where did you end up getting the interfacing? Looking forward to seeing it. Good luck, Lynn. Uh, no, this is a cream princess coat the red coat's finished you did you didn't you watch the i'm sure you watched the um the 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 you commented on the red coat in the <laughs> patreon waffle words are hard <laughs> i'm struggling today i started a sentence i started a conversation a minute ago about something and then I completely forgot the point i went off on a tangent i should not do this um we a taylor mouse i got it from taylor mouse um uh Stitchy B also had a meter and a bit left of it, which she did email me about, and I need to message her back. But the yeah, I got it from Taylor Mouse Lynn. Thank you so much for that recommendation. It was amazing. Um, Caroline says hi Jane. Michelle says hi Mama Jane. Via Grace says hi Jane. Michelle says hi Mama Jane. Hi 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 hi. Lynn <laughs> says hi Jane. How is the layers on going? I love the pattern, and my mum saw Easter eggs in the shops before Christmas. That's just wrong. Caroline says, I love your jumper, Jane. Which is it? It's, it's, it's one that she's knit, her thickest one. I love the fact that she puts on her thickest things to then come and make coats that she's never going to be able to wear over them because I bet it's a on purpose. And it's gold. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose. Uh, Agatha says, hello. Good Grace has said they had hot cross buns on sale in the grocery store on Boxing Day. I mean, at least let it become the new year. Rude. Yeah, Catherine says, I have a ginger hot chocolate. Ooh, nice. My my hot chocolate order has just gone through this morning, which means I will be restocked. I have been without for about a week so far. I, I need to not drink as much as I do when it's here. I need to pace myself. I do not. Oh, this is going to freak you out, Mum. Hello, Mrs. Singleton. <laughs> That's my mother. <laughs> I have a different surname to mum and dad. I used to be a Miss Singleton. She, yes, she did. Yeah, yes. That was my maiden name. Yes. I, I stole mum's maiden name. I have a different I have a different name to mum and dad on purpose and I'm not telling you what their name yeah. is. Um yes. Churn Dash says, I think we are booking my flight to England today. Easter Day is mum's 90th birthday. I guess I can get some Easter eggs for the first time in about 30 years. Wow, yes. Yes. Do you remember when you, you came home from Saudi and you hadn't had Easter eggs in like five oh, years or something? Yeah. So we went to Waitrose and got the Heston Blumenthal Easter egg. Was it was £30. <laughs> and it was an event. It was. It was an we actual, it literally, we were all sitting around afterwards, uh, after dinner. Um, we had a roast dinner, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And so, it, Yeah, to, and just but it was amazing because the chocolate was amazing there were chocolates in it and then there was straw but the straw was edible yeah. the whole thing oh, it was really good um but yeah 30 quid on an easter egg <laughs> Makes Makes <laughs> no you did the next year you <laughs> bought yeah oh you bought his second one you oh. didn't do it you did it two years in a row and then you stopped and i don't know if he does them anymore but yeah you stopped uh michelle says psa pub, um public service announcement chocolate does not expire <laughs> I thought that was Twinkies. You hope. <laughs> Monica says, Good morning, Jane. Agatha says, Aldi has a Ferrero Rocher chocolate. Ooh. Catherine says, Putting the second sleeve into my coat. <gasps> it's looking beautiful. And Ari says, Believe it or not, chocolate can expire. I just don't get that. It just doesn't, don't let it get to that point. No, me either. 
<laughs> the likelihood of chocolate expiring in my presence is unlikely. I gave up. I'm not remotely religious in any way, shape or form. I'm agnostic, if anything. But for one year, just to prove that I could, I gave up chocolate and crisps and sweets for Lent. And do you remember this was when you were in the Wirral? Right. And so we'd come up to you see you for Easter and you'd gone out and you'd bought this box of chocolates and they were strawberry cream filled chocolates. Um, and they were fairly expensive. They weren't like a known brand or anything. And we'd mm. never seen them before and they just looked interesting. Mm. And mum was, um, I think you, I don't know if you videoed me, but you definitely took a photo. I have a photo of me biting into this <laughs> chocolate and it's the first chocolate that I've had for over a month. And it was horrible. Oh, no. It was the worst thing ever. And it wasn't because I like lost the taste for sweet things because you had other chocolate in the house and that was delicious. But it built up to this like really fancy, amazing chocolate and they were terrible. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was sad. Uh, Gig Racer says, those are very familiar noises to anyone who sews with a computerized machine. Yes. Caroline says to Catherine, loving the progress so far. My Barbary pattern finally arrived. Ooh, nice. Lynn says, Doh, I did say the red coat, coat, brain like a sieve. Taylor Mouse interfacing is great. It's um, almost the same as the English Couture Company one. And she never replied to me after the second message. And I don't blame her. Like, you know, she spent time getting her supplier list. So I don't blame her at all for not wanting to pass that on for free. Um, and I can't afford to buy it off of her. So, yeah. I don't blame her for not replying. It was very nice of her to reply at least just the once. Um, but yeah, Taylor Mouse is brilliant. So thank you very much for that recommendation. Um, and thank you to Jojo for recommending um, Stitchy Lee as well. She didn't have any in the shop, but she did have a meter and a bit left over, which I still need to email her back about because it was 11 pounds for a meter and a half. So I think I will take, take that from her as well. Anyway, says, I'm back. Hello, Jane. And don't forget to like the stream, peeps. Yes, please. There's 94 of us and 45 likes. Catherine says to Caroline, yay. So uh, for body pieces, flatline, don't interface. Make the pocket bags two inches longer to be big enough to hold the phone. Consider making the lapel roll a bit higher up the body. And Catherine, uh, Caroline says to Catherine, noted. Thank you. Gig Racer says, but was it worth £30 for the chocolate and experience? Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> the Heston Blue, it was an event. A oh, Heston Blumenthal egg. I still have pictures of it. And when did you come back? When did Jason and you get married? July 2015. You came back in July 2015. And they got married just after that weekend. I can't be right. It was, yes, though. September. Yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, June. It, the Blumenthal thing was after I'd been in hospital as well, wasn't it? It was a special treat. Uh, yes, because I went straight into hospital. You did. Yeah. Now that no, twenty fifteen. You were still got, yeah, got Saudi, 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 Saudi. July twenty fifteen. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Started it. Yeah. And then they got married in twenty fifteen. Yeah. They're going to have been married for ten years next mm. year. Mm. Oh my god. I have the audacity to make her wedding dress as well. Like, yeah, I'll do that, no problem. It'll be fine. It did really well. It was lovely. I'm sewing to the last minute. But that was, that was her, her like, fault. Yeah, that was diet. I made a bloody muslin like a year in advance. And then she was like, oh, yeah, it's going to look great when I put the corset in diet. And it's like, well, that was just not helpful. <laughs> okay. I swear I have a picture of this Easter egg. What? You're looking for a picture of the Easter egg? I am looking for a picture of the Easter egg because I took a photo of it because it was an event. It was. So remember it like nine years on. Yeah. There it is. And that's why you were spoiling me as well. Okay, so it, like I say, it, I have a series of photos. So it was an event. So that's the box it came in. We had champagne. And that's the actual egg with gold. And then that's the inside of the egg. And everything was edible, including the straw. And it lasted the evening. <laughs> that was it. Yes. <laughs> See, and, and a collage of the event happening. <clears throat> oh, and then a collage of the event happening with a filter on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Did you remember that the egg was gold? Yeah, it was magic. Yeah, and those little eggs, they had like a um they had like a um shell. No, they were they were they had like a moussey uh, passion fruit mango y thing in them. Yeah, but they had a shell that yeah. crisp, crisp out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Bit into it. Yes. Can, can you tell we're slightly obsessed? It was special. Special moments. Yeah. Yes. But I was saying um the reason we started talking about Easter eggs is because I'd asked Dad to get me some um, Cadbury's mini eggs, oh, yeah. a bag of them, huh. and he came back and he couldn't, he had couldn't find them. He was like, "I'm really sorry, I couldn't find them anywhere." So he bought me a Cadbury's mini egg Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> it was really sweet. Oh, well, it was, was so nice. kind of him. Was, was nice. Yes. It's like when he bought, he came back the other day. Well, it's a while ago now, but he came back with a mug that he'd found for mum. Yeah, it was just this this um, navy one with gold all over it. It's huge. It's like a yeah. hot chocolate mug, which has a tea in it. Oh, you um, want to have hot chocolate? No, no, it's your mug. I don't. No, 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 no. I have. Although they did both of them throw my specific hot chocolate pods that came with my hotel chocolat velvetizer. They threw them both on the floor. Although the way that they stack the mugs in that cupboard, I'm not surprised that they leapt to their death. But yeah, wasn't me. I didn't break them. More cupboard space. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't like stack them and then like hold them and then close the door and then hit them. Because <laughs> I open the door and they jump at me. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> Suicidal China. Like no. <laughs> But yeah, my two pods from my uh, that came with my velvetizer have not survived. Oh, They've not survived my parents. Okay. One was you, one was dad. Yep. Right. Okay, I'm nearly finished, mum. <laughs> I've cleaned my machine, I've oiled it. <laughs> is Precious, Precious really is ready? Precious is happy. Oh, now. I, no, I said I've put a new needle in. Do that. Yeah, Santa remembered to get you needles for Christmas. Mm-hmm. 70 or 80 for this. I'm using a 70. Yeah. But okay. I'm nearly I'm nearly finished. I've, I've, so I've done my line of stitching. Now I just need to finish catching up with the chat, and then, then I'll show you what you need to do next. <laughs> we yes. will get there. Okay, right. Okay, where did I get to? Where did I get to? Joker Clue says, I was having flashbacks to my days, days on dial-up internet when the sewing machine fired up. You all, yeah, I know, right? It does sound like that. It does sound like a modem. Uh, that's when you know you're old and if you remember those. It's, like, it's, it's utterly terrifying, actually. I've, um, uh, leave that out because I'll, I'll steal some of you in, to put into my box over here, if that's all right. Stealing mum's Christmas presents. Why don't you give me some of your 80s back? Yeah. Do you need 80s? Yeah, or did you get them as well? No, you. I think run, you, you'd run out of seventies. Oh, is your eighties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use eighties as often as I use seventies. Oh, uh, sorry. I was, was what was I saying? Words were hard. Yeah, there's loads of things going around at the moment. It's like you know you're old if you can remember these things, and then it's just like all the things that are from my childhood, and I'm like, I'm not old. Stop it. <laughs> How can I tell you? Uh, yeah. Um, Catherine says to Caroline, and trust the measurements, they're right. That's always nice when that happens. Joker Clean says, mm, strawberry creams. I know, good strawberry creams. Amazing. Those ones were not good. Yeah. Julie Elizabeth says, good morning. Good morning. Peter says, I think the English Couture Company has retired. Possibly why you haven't had a reply. Fairly certain she finished. Yes. No, she has retired. And I emailed her. And she did, and I, the 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 line of the header of my email was, please feel free to ignore this. And I said that in the first 
um, line of the messaging as well. So I was just asking for information about the weft facing and where she got it from and if she knew of anyone else that stocked it. And she was just like, uh, sorry, I retired. No one wanted to buy the company and um, they won't. my supply won't sell to you. So I replied to her and I just said, again, feel free to ignore this one. And she has, which is fine. Um, but I just sort of said, like, I do have a shop and I would have, be happy to buy, um, you know, I would be happy to buy whole, wholesale. That's not a problem. Um, if you don't mind giving me the supplier, but I appreciate that you spent years curating and cultivating your suppliers so you may not wish to pass that on and she hasn't replied to that one and it's totally fine so i put a call out on patreon and the very lovely um uh, like i say jojo told me about so uh, stitchy b who had weft interfacing um and she's only got a meter and a bit left at the moment but it's okay i might i i, got, I will take her up on that offer and then lynn who makes lots of coats as well and pointed me in the direction of Taylor Mass. So I now have a new supplier, which is awesome. Um, I was for a little while considering stocking the Australian interfacing, like buying a roll of it, although I had to buy 300 meters. So it was a bit, it would have been a really big investment. Um, but I, I don't think the lady would have minded um, because she sells in Australia. And then obviously, you know, it's not like I'm super competing with her market. Um, but I was considering maybe kind of like having a section of my shop that had those things in the shop will launch eventually but I don't want to be a fabric shop because I don't want to have to fulfill orders and I don't want to have to like compete with other fabric shops and things like that so um, I'm kind of glad that the lady didn't get back to me and I'm glad that at least uh, Lynn could give me a, a company that stocked something that if not exactly the same is incredibly similar so I used the last of my English Couture company in weft interfacing on this one. And mum's used the new one on her coat. And it, I think it feels pretty similar. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think you've been happy with mm -hmm. how it's been sticking and mm -hmm. performing. So, well. yeah. Right. Where did I get to with the chat? I'm nearly done, mum. I will be with you in a minute. <laughs> um, Peter says in August last year that she retired. Yes. Uh, Catherine says, I ordered a meter of Violin G740 interfacing. Seems pretty light for a medium interfacing. We'll report back once I've tried it in something. See, I don't like that one as much. I have used it in bag making and it's okay for bag making, but I don't like it in clothes. Um, and it does shrink as well. Um, that's something to be aware of um, when you, when you um, wash your clothes, it does shrink. We've had we've experienced that with dad's shirts, haven't we? That the interfacing does shrink. Um, so far, the Australian interfacing does not shrink in in the wash. Um, but I, I, as you guys know, I I wash my actual clothes very very rarely. Um, like I wear like layers underneath to so that I can wash those, and um, so like knit layers underneath. But my actual clothing, like this this dress, I don't think since it's been made, I've actually washed it. And it doesn't smell. I mean, I'm assuming mum and dad would tell me if I smelled. <laughs> My clothes don't smell. Um, I, I wouldn't notice. Oh, to be fair, she wouldn't notice. Dad would tell me. He hasn't got he a subtle would. bone in his body. Um, so, yeah, um, I will say that be careful of the, G the Violin G740. Um, I do find that it shrunk. Apparently you can pre-shrink. There is instructions on how to pre-shrink those interfacings so that you can then um, use them in your clothing. Um, so yeah, just just yeah, something to be aware of. Agatha says I've been married for over eighteen years now. Aww. And Joker Clee says it will be seventeen years this coming September. And Joker Clee says, oh please, we use dial-up out here through two thousand ten. Lol. <laughs> Uh, Jojo says, aha, I've already had the make sure you're wearing the underwear you're going to wear on the day when we measure you and have fittings chat with Effie, my daughter-in-law, for her wedding dress. Lol. I told Nia that before I made the bloody muslin. Mm -hmm. Sorry for my French. I told Nia that. And she said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then she busted out the, I'm going to wear a corset. <laughs> um... Catherine says, and how a 56K modem was really fast. <laughs> yeah. Nimoy says, a college had forgotten their mug on a shelf on Thursday. A colleague at college <laughs> had forgotten their mug on a shelf on Thursday. And I was tempted to rescue 
it had Neil Gaiman quote, a book is a dream you hold in your hands, librarians. Oh, that's a nice quote. I like that. Lisa says, I'm still here. Been listening to you all while clearing everything out of the girls' bedroom, ready for collection by the baby bank tomorrow. You stopped me from breaking my heart. Thank you. Lisa, as I say, we are here for you to escape into if you need to. Agatha says, strawberries and cream baileys is fab. Don't start me on a variety of baileys because I don't need that in my life because I have no chill. We know this. Ag uh, Inari says, um, lots of hugs for Lisa. Peter says, aha, excellent to know about another good supply for tailoring stuff. Yes. Taylor Mouse, thank you, Lynn, for the, for the recommendation, 100%. Uh, Catherine says, ah, so I'll only use it in non-washing stuff. I buy the William G. own brand light cotton interfacing for most things and medium for others. Nice. Joker Clue sa says, are you saying your dad has all the subtlety of an armoured division in the bamboo jungle? Yes. 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 Goo Grocer says, I couldn't get away without washing frequently as A, it's too hot for layers here and B, I drop everything on my boobs. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> yeah, I am... Um, I, you know, I, I live in the climate I do and I wear the layers that I do and I get away with certain things and I do wash my clothes when they need it. But um, I very rarely wash my outer clothing because um, of the layers that I put on. But in, in certain heats, that's just not possible. So, yes. Um, and Caroline says April 14th is our Ruby 40th anniversary. Oh, wow. Wow. Right, Mum, I'm caught up with the chat. I finished sewing my line. Let's get this. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I've been very good. You have. Do we need um, pads as well as you know them? you're on camera, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was stretching. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> that was a surprise. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> stretch! <laughs> yeah, you have to say that to your pets, don't you? Big stretch yeah. whenever, whenever they do that. Yeah. It's the law, or you have to do. <laughs> Sorry. Do we have to have pads as well as. We've got... Do we need both? Yes, because they do different things. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Being a novice. Mm. Right, sleeve heads. Okay. So you're sewing your sleeve head in. Center this sleeve head in the sleeve cap and slip stitch to the folded edge of the sleeve seam. I've got you the book so that you can refer back That's to it. Very that. good. Yeah. I thought so. Thank you. Right. So this mm. in there goes in here. Ooh. And you want to put your mark with your shoulder seam. Yeah. And you're going to slip stitch it in all the way around. And I like to anchor it there, sew that way, and then go and sew yeah. that way back. Yeah, so you like anchor it at the centre. Mm -hmm. And you don't obviously want it to be... Have you trimmed this? No. Uh, yeah. Because otherwise you've yes, sewn it with a tiny seam on it. Yeah, so no, you've no, trimmed it. Yeah. Okay. Except for that bit. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one bit. <laughs> I'll so you're sewing it like just above where you've stitched... Oh, right. Okay. Don't, because if you sew it so that you can see it, it'll, that, show. it'll show. So yeah. you're stitching just above that line there, okay? And you use it's the machine, no, not, not hand. hand. Oh, hand, stitching. yeah. That's what I thought. Loose si slip yeah. stitches. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you do the same for both sides. Right, okay. And these are super tiny shoulder pads, so I would put them in. Right. Because when you tried on the other one, it collapsed a little in that area. So, I, And this is heavier fabric than that one. Okay. So I would. You have to show me where to put them. So I'm sharing my Christmas present with you as well. Yeah, that's very decent of you. I think so. I will steal some of your needles now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do this. No, don't pin them both in because huh? you've then got to fight with a thing with a pin in it huh? where you're not looking at it in your lap. I'll do one at a time. Mum's idea of logical and my idea of logical are very different. And so we should, I was getting her to do something yesterday. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm doing the thing you said. And I was like, but do this first. And she said, like, why? <laughs> because it's the logical way to do it. She's like, no, it's not. Yeah. Two very different brains. Although our IQ points apparently are very similar. Mum's got higher IQ than me. Oh, right. 
Yes. Mm. Well, from what you told me. Yeah. Mine was surprisingly high. <laughs> it's not <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> high at all. I'm very surprised. <laughs> Mum's got an IQ of 129. Mine's 125. Why are you surprised? Well, because it's that kind of academic type. Well, I'm not academic either, like remotely. No. But like IQ is not necessarily. No. Um, it's more about spatial awareness mm -hmm. and the um, kind of like how things fit together and that kind of, of reasoning, spatial reasoning. So, at least the test that I did was. It was lots of shapes and how logically what was the next shape that had to go into the sequence. I've taken so I think. Um, so yeah, neither of us are geniuses, but we are on the slightly higher end of the like above average scale. <laughs> She says not being able to put a slidey box back together. And you just do the slip, the slip stitch to one side. Do you want to see how mine's gone well, in? Not the bottom as well. No, because that would be invisible mm. sleeve territory. Mm. Uh, right, okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, Vox says, what do you use as an underdress? Um, so usually like the microfiber slips that I get from Next. So I've got one of those on. If you watch any of my Outfit of the Day shorts, those those slips, and I do link to those slips in um, the description of that video. Um, yeah. Um, and then I tend to... Uh, hang my dresses up for like a day or so after I've worn them and then put them back in the wardrobe just so that it can air out um, but if I get spill anything on it or if it smells then I will wash it but I mean like you know I don't think my clothes do <laughs> mum can't smell anything since covid so apparently she wouldn't tell me but I think dad would <laughs> uh, but yeah slips slips Joker Clee says, hey, it could be a lot worse, a lol. Catherine says, I like James. These are my scissors necklace. Yeah, but they're still, they're crap scissors. Yeah, I need new ones. <laughs> she keeps putting them on, using them, going, oh, God, they're awful. And um, I offered to get her a pair of these, and she said no. So, did I? Yeah. When did I it? it was yesterday, Mother. I thought, I thought so, but, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, so <laughs> she does that a lot as well she'll have completely different conversations in her head and then it's like i'm like well we didn't say that and she's like but i did it's like, <laughs> but both of us like, oh yeah <laughs> box says anyone with recommendations for someone me who tends to sweat from the underarms um i really like dove uh, rollable deodorants I tried the wild deodorant and I hated that and I had to wash my clothes every single day when I was wearing that because it did not work for me at all but my best friend loves it and she took because I bought a three pack and she took the three pack from me and loved it um I don't know because I think you is am I right saying you live in Port Portugal so you definitely have a very very different climate than we do and I am quite jealous of it so um I don't know Grace, I was thinking, big stretch as Jane stretched. <laughs> yeah, you have to do that. I didn't know I was online. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 At least you weren't adjusting your underclothing or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine says to Fox, I traditionally approach would be removable armpit shields. Yes. Uh, uh, Julia Bobbin, she does those for her tailored jackets. She makes um, underarm shields that are like uh, loosely stitched in um, and you can take those out and launder those. And then that means that the actual jacket itself doesn't need to get washed. Uh, Joker Clee says, find someone who sweats more than you do, Vox, like me. Lol, I sweat so much that when it's hot, 
out and I'm working hard that I can literally wring out my shirt after 15 minutes. Well, there is the kind of thing that I live very sedentary life and not in a hot climate. <laughs> what works for me may not work for others. Agatha says, and congratulations to Caroline on the Ruby anniversary. Um, let's see. Oh, where did I get to the chat? Um, yeah, uh, Vox, have a look at Julia Bobbin on Instagram and have a look at some of her um, um, saved stories for the Armpit Shields. That's the only um, in-person like use of them that I've seen. I'm sure other people do as well, but yeah. Um, Jojo says, aha, she's going to leave her wedding day under things here to make sure they're always to hand pre-wedding. I'm, I'm having no emergency night before the wedding alterations here, fingers crossed, yeah. I went to my friend's wedding in Holland, in not Holland, Netherlands, sorry, um, just outside of, it, oh, it was in Harlem, and we were at her house um, the night before the wedding, and one of the bridesmaids dresses they tailored the wrong one and they'd taken it in and it didn't fit the girl and so I spent I was up till two in the morning um let letting it out and thankfully they hadn't cut any of the seams because if they'd cut the seams it would be, if they'd cut the seam on it's out then there would be nothing I could have done um but yeah thank I just I spent the entire evening letting this dress out so that it fit her I was up till two in the morning um, as was everybody else because they had to wait for me to do the thing so you know it's not just me sort of sitting there by candlelight sewing but oh gosh that poor girl um but yeah made it work and it fit and she got to wear her dress on the day and it was all good but oh that was thankfully they tried it on before could you imagine trying it on in the morning mm. of and finding out the tail is fluffed up not good Vox says to Catherine, never heard of it. I'm going to Google it. Um, Google it now, thanks. Joker Clue says, congrats on the 40th and, um, anniversary to Caroline. Um, my folks passed that five years ago now. Oh, wow. And Gig Racer says, congratulations to Caroline. That's brilliant. Agatha says, Vox, the underarm patches like they wore in the late 1800s. And Ari says, big stretch, just like a cat. <laughs> yes. Agatha says, I'm off, everyone. Uh, family needs lunch. I need a bowl of ice cream with my fruit for lunch. Of course, as it counts as fruit salad in my eyes, definitely. Uh, Jojo says, Vox, I use old school dress shields. They're great. Uh, Caroline says, Einstein's IQ was 165. Um, Inari says, for Agatha, I love how you think. <laughs> yeah, it totally is a, totally is a um, fruit salad. Words are hard. I know what I'm doing. Joker Clue says it's like having an int score, uh, intelligence score in, in Dungeons and Dragons of 25, but a wisdom score of five. Lol, lots of knowledge, but no idea how to use it. Yeah, like you find that geniuses are super, 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 super intelligent, but with no um, kind of like social awareness. Uh, their EQ levels are not as high as their IQ levels. Um, I've watched a lot. Of, I watched all of Scorpion. I very much enjoyed Scorpion. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously they like. It's based on a real person, but I don't know how many of the exploits were actually real things that happened. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, but yes, EQ and IQ are very different things, and it's very nice to have a balance. What, is, what was that, Mum? Very different. Very different. Uh, Nimoy says, you're both shy of qualifying for Mensa, so close that Mensa's German, Germany would offer you... Uh, to retest you for free to see if it was just daily variances. Ooh. Um, Joker Clue says, it's like uh, casting a fireball, but aiming it at your party instead of the bad guys because they're in the same general area, lol. Critical failures don't count, lol. <laughs> yep. Uh, Caroline says to Joker Clue, it means admitting my age, though. <laughs> and she says, thank you to Good Grace, sir. Good Grace says to Vox, I like the body shop aloe deodorant if you're wanting something other than armpit shields. 
box says, ah, dress shields seem like the perfect thing. Would you use any specific material to make them? I would like to avoid disposable ones. I found loads now on Amazon. Something that's easily washable, and I would say a natural fibre, because you want something that wicks the sweat away and um, that uh, you can stick in the wash and and like launder, and then that be the thing that you launder rather than, your, than the whole of the dress. Catherine says, I'd go for linen if you can get it. Takes the hottest washes. Yeah. Uh, Caroline says to Agatha, thank you. Gee Gracer says to Box Bamboo is a great option as it's antibacterial as well as absorbent. Box says to Gee Gracer, hi, I will check. I tried the drunk elephant one, but it did not work for me. So I am back to regular ones. And Joker Clee says, Minion Man says hello. Hello, Minion Man. Hello. Right, more under stitching. I've done I've done like three lines of stitching so far this this hangout. <laughs> well wonders never cease. Oh, okay, that's why that was doing that. I'm paying attention. Oh no, what are you under stitching? My coat. Yeah, yeah. Centre front. Okay, okay, so I need to stitch it from. Yeah. Peter says there's 1940s free pattern for dress shields online. Uh, Jeff Clee says he's sitting here cheering you on uh, like a quiet crowd. Lol. Mini, mini, Mexican. Uh, Jojo says to Vox, I make my own bamboo, linen, and cotton are my go to for my dress shields. They're seriously easy to make. Uh, tons of templates online. You guys, you guys have the best hive mind. I like it a lot. Ow. See, intelligent and keep pricking myself with a pin that I know is there. So I told mum I need to do one at a time because <laughs> constantly pinning everything in and then having to fight with something that's trying to stab you every five seconds is not the most fun. That's all where it's supposed to be. Jodio says, I've read that one. Carol says, good morning from New York City. Actual sewing happening. I know. Who even am I? What is going on? How are you, Carol? Welcome. I was having a look last night through the embroidery motifs that I own because when I did my fabric room order for my 20 meters of viscose, I needed to bump the order up a little bit so I could get free shipping. Um, so I ordered five meters of that blue, that light blue uh, viscose marocane there, and then five meters of navy. And um, Trashy Diva, I have, a, I have kind of like a list of things I want to try and achieve this year. And um, recreating some of my favorite Trashy Diva dresses is on there. And Trashy Diva had a silk dress that I actually did own, but I have sold because it was a hanky hem and it just, and the, the bodice was never long enough for me. It was one of their Obi dresses, but they had them embroidered here with um, Chinese looking dragons. And so I went, I had a bit of a thing um, with embroidery library because they would do offers and you could buy 10 embroidery motifs from them for $10. Do you remember those right. days? Yeah. And I went through my library because they've merged with urban threads as well. So I went through and looked at all the embroidery motifs that I have. And I do have like an inky kind of like outline one that's a snake and it would go with the anaconda antithesis. And so I was thinking of giving um, embroidering some of these ago to make the Obi dresses or something like the Obi dresses for the plainer fabrics, because we all know I prefer patterns. 
um, I bought the fabric ring fabrics because I thought at the very least I can use them as linings for other things if I don't end up using them for dresses. Um, but I kind of thought that that would look quite cool. And then also, you remember that lace striped fabric that I cut up and I'm using as insertion lace? I have, I need to get that out and see if the grey blue colour is a good match for this kind of, I think it might, this might be brighter than that. But that was another thing that I thought I might maybe do with those rather than just plain dresses. Because I was going to do just plain shirt dresses with both of them. But I don't wear those very often. You've done both sides? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you need to put in your shoulder pads. Let me just finish this little bit of stitching. Who's I get to with the chat? Catherine says, I'm putting my sleeve in by hand easier than wrangling the enormous coat around a, uh, around a free arm. Yeah. On uh, my red coat, I ended up sewing my sleeve in like five different sections because it was easier to stitch a bit that was flat back stitch take it out from under the machine move the entire coat rather than try and wrangle it because oh my gosh that thing was heavy I put the sleeves in this one before in before I put the skirt on because the skirt's only tiny on this one but still I, I was trying to wrangle as little coat as possible but the 6800 doesn't have um, a waist seam so that's not an option so good luck <laughs> Okay, if you have a look at the book that I've put in front of you, it should tell you where to put the shoulder pads. But you want to find the centre point of the shoulder pads as well. Mm -hmm. It might not be on that page, but it might be. Is it? Yeah, there you go. It's on the next page. You can put... Oh, you can't put the coat on. I was going to say, I, you can put the black one on and put the shoulder pad underneath and see what you think. I personally would, because they're very small ones. I'm not going to look like an 80s power suit. You might want to get your chalk. Oh, okay. Well, that also works. She's using pins. Also works. Um, Carol says, been, I'm good. Been sleeping better. So have been missing um, or late to the lives. Sleep is always good, though. We do like some sleep. Okay. Understitching done. Now I can sew up the hem. Please tell me I've understitched. Yes, I have understitched the right part. <laughs> Suddenly had the fear that I've just done a giant line of stitching on the wrong bit. I'll take out the safety pin as well because I do not want to be stabbed by my coat. That would not be fun. Box says to Jojo, I'll be trying it for sure. Have some linen. Thank you. It will be summertime in the blink of an eye. And every time I go to the office, it's a sweaty mess. Do they not have air conditioning? Tell them they need to get you some air conditioning. Catherine says, I do the underarm and the upper arm separately. So the gathered and not gathered. Nice. Then Ira says, for Carol, then again, her mum is actually there. Uh, Catherine says, thinking shoulder pads, the prim assembled wadding as opposed to foam a pretty skinny, um, more for just holding shape than giving power. Yeah, these ones are the, what we had available at Hellasys. Um, I don't necessarily think I would buy more of them again if I could have access to the wadding ones, but we don't without having to order them. And this is what we had in stock, so we shall use it and see how that goes. Right. Even for a little coat, it's got a big scrap. Now I've got to try not to sew my pocket bags in because we don't want visible pocket bags and we don't want sewn in pocket bags. So what I do is you want, you want it to be slightly over the seam allowance of the, mm -hmm. yeah. not that far for me. Right. Um, you know that the you've got your shoulder pad in backwards as well yes uh, <laughs> and I just overhung mine by a little bit not yeah say try it on you can't no I, I, I you should have done this before you did the others the next the step that you've now you've done I'm sorry that was my fault. 
Oh, you sew it onto this and that. Yeah, oh, and I sew down the flap seam as well. You kind of want to the side. But yeah, that you've got bit yeah, that corner you've got your fingers on. Reset the machine so I don't exactly so. Um, let's see. Joker Claire says, Joker Claire says, more power does the Tim the tall man Taylor sound adds a big block V8 to the coat just in case. <laughs> Did I say something stupid? Did I? It's quite possible. Um, Joker Clee says falls off the chair laughing. I clearly said something funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> or was it some was it something somebody else said? I have no I'm I'm sorry, my brain is really not on form at the moment. It's all over the shop. Catherine says swoosh. Yes, lots of swoosh. Uh, Jojo says to Box, I'm exactly the same. As soon as the temp starts increasing, I turn into a sweaty mess too. Dress shields are a lifesaver. And I even carried spares in my bag to swap them if needed. Joker Clear says, Mrs. Joker Clear says, it doesn't need more power, just needs more wings at the back. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, what, what have I said that is funny? And now what? 60s what, power dress. 80s power dress. 80s power dress. Yeah. 80s, 80s power suits. Life suits. Yeah. I took more that. Yeah. Probably shouldn't. No. <laughs> Especially if you're in hourglass, like enhancing mm. the shoulders. Helps, helps the hourglass. Um, Car Caroline says, Joker please uh, try it. Uh, thank you. Looking for GMA T50 F car on YouTube. It's a roaring engine. I was the same same room as one on Friday. Okay. Just beginning and showing. Of this, I know actual sewing on a hangout. Who'd have thought? Oh, God, we're two hours in. How did that happen? Joker Flea says, Are your ears still ringing? Lol. <laughs> From the car engine. Oh. So much skirt. I do love big skirts, but oh my goodness, they are hard work. Joker Cleese says, yeah, Mrs. Joker Cleese was amazed that you were doing actual sewing today. Lol. I know. Who even am I? What is going on? What is actually going on? Although I think Mum's going to have a finished coat by the end of this week, which was the desired outcome. Yeah. Although the press studs aren't arriving till Wednesday. So you might not be able to wear it till Wednesday. Yeah, we stopped last night with mum's coat because she had to bag out her sleeves and after having the debacle of like draw your sleeve, draw your stitching line on being misunderstood, we decided that we were both too tired to make sense and left. Sure. <laughs> it was the funniest thing, it's just a blank look on her face and I'm just like, how do I say this any clearer? <laughs> I'm yeah. sewing, I'm not drawing. Yeah, we're definitely having one of those. Um, uh, Caroline says, um, fan car, Kierden says hello, and yeah, it's still buzzing, but joys of working for Gordon Murray. And uh, Joker Police says, nice. Catherine says, my wee bramble keeps putting her paw on my left hand to say, pay attention to me every time I try and get a photo of her looking cute. She moves, yeah, yes, 
you haven't signed her contract she she needs at least three kind of treats for any desirable photos to be taken it's always so cute when they sit next to you and like pour at you and like love me and you're like okay and you give them attention and like and now i bite you thanks great thanks for that Caroline says to Catherine, Kidden is doing his uh, flexi dog kit pose again. <laughs> yeah, that did not look comfortable, bless him. It's like Susie insisting on lying on uh, blankets that are rucked up and not smooth. Apparently all those little like valley, hills and valleys are, are, are the desired sleeping arrangement. I'm, I'm just like, okay. You little weirdo. Nimue says, we'll have an interesting year temperature-wise at work. They're redoing the AC and we'll turn off the first section on Monday. Could get cold now, hot in the summer and certainly stale air. Joy. Oh, poor thing. Fox says to Jojo, that is what I was thinking for long days. I would carry spare ones. They have AC, but it malfunctions depending on the number of people there. Number of people there. It struggles to control the temperature. Oh, bless it. So you think just just go down here as well. Oh, why the hell are you sewing that in? You know what a shoulder pad does. I'm just sewing it. Like they say. No, they I'm didn't see. <laughs> this edge goes here. Oh. You told me to that was to had it the wrong way around. You did, you had it in like that. You were trying to sew this bit here, which is yeah. it goes like that. I'm sorry I hadn't seen that you put it that far in. Look. It's the sleeve head. No, so you're sewing it on top of this. Oh, right. Okay? I've said it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe Clue says fans are your friend Nimoy lol especially for those big floor fans that could hover if pointed downwards at the floor and uh, Laurel's here good morning all good morning is it ridiculously early where you are Chicago. So it's early. Just your definition of ridiculous and my definition of ridiculous might be different. If anyone says 7 a.m. is a regular time to get up, mother and father, it is not. We're still not ready to face the day until 10. Yes. But 7 a.m. is excessive. Much better than I used to be. This is true. Five o'clock, I have to get up. Yeah. That's not normal. Mm. Dad's at least stopped shouting at the dog to go down the stairs in the evening when he comes to bed, which is much appreciated for us, those of us who are asleep before he comes to bed. I mean, Susie is deaf and blind now, mm. so trying to herd her in the correct direction is not the easiest thing. And she does seem to get, she, she'll she bump into things and then kind of go around in loops. Yeah. And she just, she gets stuck in a loop. And just, yeah, she can't quite find the exit point. Caroline says, ah, oh, heating AC still isn't working. Thankfully, I have a plug-in radiator under my desk, but we may have been moving into the main block of our site soon. Uh, Jenny Pin says, I finished a new shawl last week, but haven't been able to sew in the ends as yet. Calpurnia has claimed it already. It's already got loads of her, her puffs and is covered in cat hair. Loads of her pulls and is covered in cat hair. Good job I wasn't keen on it. Oh, Calpurnia. Oh. <laughs> Lauren says, it's 7.30, so not ridiculous. No, that is ridiculous. 
<laughs> Caroline says, I'm usually in the office by 7.15 a.m. Again, ridiculous. But bear in mind that I am a night owl and I used to go to work at 10 p.m. That would be my start time and I would finish at 6.15 a.m. And so my bedtime was 7.15. And that's why it's ridiculous. But yes. I would much rather work night shifts than day shifts. Oh, well, the, the graveyard shift, they used to make me start at 6.15 in the morning. And that's just mean. I had to get up at like four. It did not work for me. So I did. I think I've told you guys this. I did it the other way around. I went to bed the minute I got home at two o'clock in the afternoon, slept till 11 p.m. and got up at 11 and had my day that way. It worked. I was much better at that than trying to wake up at trying to go to bed at eight and wake up at four I couldn't do I was I was not a functioning human when you're supposed to be doing the count or playing you know doing blackjack or playing roulette for people and paying out thousands of pounds you need to be on the ball and I was not <laughs> so mm. Pugh Gracer says, I feel you know why the air conditioning in my car has been broken since mid-December and we are well into a third heat wave since then, up to a temperature of 43 degrees centigrade, which feels like 46. Not fun. That is not fun without air conditioning. I mean, it's hilarious because everyone gets really upset with the British people when we complain that it's like over 30 degrees and we're like, oh my God, we're dying. That's because our country is not set up for any kind of extreme of weather in either direction. We, 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 we grind to a halt with an inch of snow or too much you've definitely got it in the right place now yes yeah. yes above the sleeve head so the other side of where you sew you sewed the sleeve head in yeah yeah good um yeah we um yeah but 46 degrees with no air con in the car that is not fun joker clear says now nah, getting up at a quarter to five in the morning to go roll hay while it's still a touch do damp is excessive lol <laughs> Catherine says my weekday radio comes on at 6 a.m for an hour of bbc radio three and Ari says now i have a craving for thick turkey sandwich yes it's still too early to eat you've gone from sweet to savory though that's 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 something Uh, and in way says to joke, please, I'll pack the good old handheld fan in my bag for sure. I doubt they'll invest in enough in electric ones for all of us. Also, we're already a noisy library, but that might be too much. Ginny Pin says, I'll be up at 5.30 to leave the flat for 6.30 to start at 7.30 next week. <gasps> That's far too early. Yeah, I'm not a morning person at all. Catherine says, I'm usually in bed by 9 p.m. See, I struggled to get to sleep. Like last night, I managed 11.30. Um, so I lie there in the dark, <laughs> willing myself to go to sleep. Um, and I know I dropped off at about one o'clock because I got an another hour into the story that I'm listening to. <laughs> so, yeah. Joke, please. I spent 10 years working security, so I love the night shifts, lol, apart from having to deal with the hotel bar hotel um bar rush at 1 30 to 2 at 3 a.m lol yeah I, I loved working nights i was i was good at good at night shifts um, but they kept because i dealt all the games they kept putting me on the graveyard shifts the 6 a.m starts and i just I couldn't do those couldn't do them um caroline says Ian's I get home at four means I get home at four thirty ish, so should have some time. Nice. Joker Clee says I also had advantage of requesting the night shifts at all all affairs because I know how to handle animals, including those big um uh Percheron horses that are known to know how to undo the horse proof latches. Lol love I love it when they're, they're just like, ha, horse proof. You <laughs> have to be show you. Caroline says to joke, please, my grand, uh, grandpa has a shire that like to wander about the yard and visit the pigs. <laughs> nice. Linnea says, hello, I'm really late, but I thought I would just say hi at least. Hello, Linnea, how are you? What was that, mum? Oh, okay. 
Uh, Jack Clear says, yeah, this push was at the Royal Manitoba Winter Fair and he'd go for a walk about 4 a.m. Lol, good thing he understood commands because he, I could tell him to go back to his stool and he'd listen. Lol, nice. Did you happen to bribe as well with the carrots and polo mints involved? Uh, Gig Racer says, I find it easier to work late and night shifts are, um, than day shifts. I naturally go to sleep at 1 to 3 a.m. So getting up at 5 wrecks me. Yeah, the same. I would be terrible at that. Oh, I was terrible at that. Uh, Nimoy says, my regular work day finishes at midnight, so early mornings are evil, already dreading having to take the car in for inspection at 8 a.m. in March. Oof. Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry, you're talking all this talk of sleep in early mornings, and I'm morning. <laughs> Jake Clee says, and it never failed for me to walk in about 4 a.m., and hear clop 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 as he wandering around <laughs> visiting all the other horses from various places, including the Budweiser Budweiser Clydesdales. <laughs> Hello, Michelle says I'm a night person. My daughter is is six and still wakes up at five a.m. every day, and I've been adjustment adjusting to this motherhood thing. Good thing she's cute. They have to be cute, don't they? Because otherwise they would have gotten murdered ages ago. Yeah, baby animal cuteness and the, and the mothering hormones are basically responsible for the continued um, longevity of most species. Uh, why do I want hands this big? At least I don't have to hand hem this one. There is that. <coughs> Fluff in my throat. The amount of fluff that's floating around this room at the moment with mum doing her coat and me doing mine. And as I said earlier, the diametric opposites, aren't they? Like oh. mum's doing black and I'm doing white or cream. <laughs> so both of our coats are getting covered in the opposite fluff. <laughs> no, it says, I'm fine. Hope that it is going in a good direction for you. I'm working on my UFO box. Half of it is done, 13 pieces so far. That is so virtuous of you. Oh, yeah, UFOs for me. I've still got that uh, Rixlow dress from two years ago that needs hemming. It's, it's going to be for my best friend. I'm trying to bribe her to come down here um, by saying that I'll finish it for her <laughs> if she comes down here so I can fit it to her properly. <coughs> uh, Jackie Clue says, I had less trouble with him than I did the owner's lol. <laughs> Monica says, I'm cutting out the second. Oh, gosh. <coughs> okay, and repeat on the other side. Ooh. Um Monica says, I'm currently on my second Metro Blazer. Made one yesterday, size down, and excited for this one. Ooh, interesting. Catherine says, just to make you all jealous, um, I'll be having a bit of leftover curry for lunch in a bit. Ooh, nice. Extra careful when I'm sewing over the seams because I don't want to get any of the seam allowance like twisted or back on itself. Not the end of the world, but I'm trying to do as little unpicking as possible.
That looks right. You got it in the right. Yeah, yeah that looks right. My thread has, the bobbin threads just come up to say it's starting to run out, so I'll be on my third bobbin refill this month. They're going to be really shocked when they if they come back and watch this one later because I'm actually doing what it says in the title of this hangout and there is actual sewing happening. That's a, that's a rare occurrence. Very rare occurrence. <clears throat> oh my goodness, this skirt is huge. And then it says, oh, I forgot, yesterday I finished the Eve dress. I started on in, in summer of 2022 and I love it. Didn't then because I didn't like how it looked postpartum. So I went in the box, but now I love it. Ah, oh, nice. Do love a good Eve. Uh, Catherine says, what length princess are you making? Um, the front is 12 inches and the back is 14 inches. So it's a slightly high low hem. I didn't go too dramatic because of lack of fabric and I didn't want it any shorter than that at the front, but I also didn't want to do exactly the same length the whole way around either because I didn't overly love the green velvet the same length the whole way around. I think I, I think this is going to be good. I liked it when I put it on. I didn't make a muslin because I've made two of these so far and I, I know I like the bodice of them. Um, Also, this uh, coat, I used a very small amount of my lining fabric. My um, best friend bought me four metres of the Lena crepe as a Christmas birthday present a couple of years ago. And um, it is the polyester one. So it's the only floaty anaconda antithesis they had, though. The other ones were much stiffer fabrics, like the cotton lawn and the drill. Um, so I caved and bought the, or, or asked for the crepe for a Christmas present. Um, they have promised that they are going to print it on viscose, the Riccardi viscose as well, for it should be here in April, um, which I'm quite excited about. But because I only used a little bit of the four meters I had for the lining for this, um, I'm gonna have enough to make a three panel, three quarter circle skirt, um, I think. 
and possibly use it for a lining for something else as well. Um, but I, because I can line the skirt, circle skirt in the viscose, I actually have the natural fiber next to my skin. And then I have like the polyester fabric on the outside, but it's still drapey and it's nice and bright and vibrant. So I'm quite pleased that I ended up going for this coat rather than anything else. And um, because it's just given me like that extra option with that fabric that I love. But I am excited to see the um, Anaconda Antithesis on one of their viscoses because I do very much like the Riccardi one very much. Uh, Inara says, I love a huge fluffy skirt. Me too. That's why I decided to go for the princess coat because mum and I were talking about it because as you know we were going to be doing the 1669 but mum decided the skirt that was too big for her um, and so I was, this this fabric was going to be the Lezon trench coat as well, that's what I had intended but I wanted to lengthen it a little bit and I didn't have enough of this fabric by about half a metre but this was a remnant and it's a, a remnant I bought ages ago so I, cu I couldn't buy any more of it um, and then I was just like oh but do I even like the skirt of the Lausanne trench coat? Like it's nice, but it's very A-line and everything I wear has big skirts on it. So it's just like, it would make much more sense to do like a princess coat, even if it's got just a peplum rather than like a full length skirt on it, because it would just work better over, over my um, dresses that I like to wear. Like my Minoro coat, I used to wear that over all of my dresses. And when I zip it up, it was very fitted over the hips and then I just have the poof of my dress underneath and it kind of did look a bit odd. So, yeah. I did think about doing this cropped at the waist because that is an option with the princess coat, but I decided that I, I wanted the little peplum on it. But rather than trace out the peplum from the pattern, I just... Um, used the long skirt that I had and uh, kind of, like I say, made a high-low hem one and then drafted the facing for it. Okay, so now we need to do the sleeves. Okay. Let me just finish this bit. Lynn says, well, I've got to, I got back to sleep for two hours. Thanks for the help. <laughs> I'm glad that we could send you to sleep. Uh, Catherine says, sleeve in, now for the head and the pad. Good luck. Do I trim? Um, yeah, you need to trim carefully. You need to notch in at the collar. If you look at the instruction book, it should say to notch around the collar. Theoretically, it should anyway. Um, Jojo says, totally unrelated, but I didn't leave my makeup bag at your house back in October, did I? I seriously doubt it, but I've not seen it in since, and I'm tired of looking like I've just been dug up. No, not that I saw. There was a random cardigan. Did we work out who's that belonged to? Yeah, it was Casey's. Yeah, mum kept trying to give it to me, but she did it by, um, she put it at the end of the bottom of the stairs and then she put it on the banister of the stairs and then she moved it up a couple of stairs and then she moved it up a couple more stairs and then she put it on my landing. And I sort of came in and I was like, this cardigan is making its way up to my house very slowly, but like, it's not mine. She's like, oh, we, we haven't had anyone here. And clearly you had. I thought it was your friend. No. Nicola. Yeah. It's not a spring colour, mother. It's a very muted colour. But no, just but rather than tell me what it was, it just kind of like kept moving up a couple of steps every day. It's just like, are you trying to tell me something? How am I supposed to take this somewhere? It's like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> and Joker Cleese is rolling on the floor laughing his ass off at Jojo. Maybe Chiana took it and you hid it. Lol. I uh, wouldn't put it past her. Although she did warm up to you towards the end, didn't she, Jojo? You were allowed to let 
to she did let sniff your hand and you were allowed to I think touch the head I think yeah, yeah straight the head Are you clipping as well as trimming? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just the inside of it. Okay. Olivia says, you're still alive. Yay. In fact, she says it in a different order, but those words were in that sentence. <laughs> she says, yay, you're still alive. Good morning from Iowa. Good morning, Olivia. Uh, still live and actually sewing. Yeah, there's been no um, video on the channel this week, so um, I thought I, whilst I was like feeling human, I would sit and chat with you uh, live. The next video to come out will be the Patreon update and just like a, a kind of I know I said this last week, I've got to stop saying I'm going to do things in the week and then my body tells me other things. Um, but yeah, a Patreon update and then the Anaconda Antithesis collection video. I'm going to do that. I've also got my Make 9 to do as well. I think I've worked out a way of doing that so it's not the world's longest video. I might put an unedited version out on um, Patreon. <laughs> Oh, I'm almost done. We're almost there. Oh, exciting. Now, I just have to trim the million miles of hem. Uh, Olivia says, How, how's the coat coming along? Very well, thank you. Jojo says, yes, my lady Chiana did allow me to give her some love and no blood was spilled. It's quite impressive. After um, pointing out how messy mum was yesterday, I'm trying to be much more neat because I don't want her to come over here and be like, well, look at this mess. Joker Clue says, that's good. Usually when I pick up a cat around here, I end up winding look like I've lost an argument with a rogue lawnmower. Lol. <laughs> yeah, Jojo didn't get as far as picking up Chi. I, I wouldn't advise that for anyone except me. 
it's not her favourite activity. She tolerates it because she knows I like it. But I wouldn't advise anyone else try. Catherine says, important questions. Are the coat pockets big enough for seditious pamphlets? I had to make these coat pockets slightly smaller because I they the actual original pocket bag was longer than the coat. So yeah, I had to trim the um, size of these pocket bags down. So these may not be quite, quite big enough for seditious pamphlets, but it does have secret pockets for, for yeah, for that reason. Mums, mums are bigger. Mums, mums will probably be fine for seditious pamphlets. Didn't they prove that that was some um, nonsense, but it's still fun? The reason that women's pocket clothes don't have pockets in them is because they can't be trusted to not spread seditious pamphlets. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, women in pockets are dangerous. Women exactly. Jojo says, Joker, please. I can imagine Chi chuckling away at my facial mis at my facial misfortune, having squirreled my makeup bag away in a cupboard behind her treats. <laughs> Just because she's beautiful doesn't mean she's an eagle mastermind. I mean, she is a fairly intelligent cat. Well, I, I probably wouldn't want her to develop thumbs or the ability to actually, you know, speak. There was I saw a video the other day of a lady unrolling her crocheted scarf that she'd made, and it was, she was rolling it off the side. She was trying to video it, and she was rolling it off the side of a sofa. Was it one of you guys who put it in the peeps group? And um, it rolled off the end of the sofa and then suddenly this ginger cat just launched itself into the air because clearly it had been asleep down the end and then this thing fell on it from nowhere and this cat was just like literally levitated up, up into the sky. But one of the comments was, please don't do that because the cats will launch themselves high enough to make orbit in space and then get in contact with aliens and then we really are screwed. Oh, yeah. yeah. You read that book? What book? About cats in space. Um, well, I've read I've read the one um, about the bark cats and the caffrey. No. no. It's really good. Right. Okay. I'm going to do it Okay, so you need to turn it right side out as much as you can. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, don't get too precious about it. The, the hole of the bottom edge is open. No, not through there. The hole of the bottom oh. edge is open. Oh. Yes, through there. There you go. Yes, much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I need a hole? For in a minute, okay, and so oh, it's looking really pretty. So then you want to take your lining sleeve and put it through the outer sleeve so that, yeah, through the outer sleeve so that it's nice and flat mm -hmm. and all facing the right way, okay. And so, what you do is you turn. And do this one at a time because otherwise it will try and stab you whilst you're working on it. It looks really good, Mum. So at the end of your sleeve, which you've covered up with the coat. No, yeah, 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 okay. So turn the, in, so you've got your left hand on it. That's the hand that you want, that's the way you want to work at this. So take the other hand out. Yes, right. Um, Because you're right handed. <laughs> so you want to turn the sleeve, sleeve seam allowance under. And then some lining seam allowance under. Doesn't matter by how much, just turn them under. It is a long sleeve because it has it. No, just yeah, trust yeah. me. How much? Do I turn it, it doesn't matter at this moment in time. You just want to turn the sleeve allowance under. Just one bit. Do it at a, a seam because then you can match up the other seam to make sure your lining is not twisted. Yeah, and then turn the seam allowance of the lining under. Just a little bit. Okay, so you want to pin the two turned under bits. You can literally just have to turn under sort of like an inch. 
mum. Just a tiny bit. Not the whole thing, not the whole way around, just a tiny bit, yeah. And match those two bits up. And seeing if I could describe it, because I want to try and do, I've done a video on this. Matching up the seams, yeah. So this will try and stab you. So you need to remember that you have a pin in here that's going to try and kill you. Okay, so now reach up, and that's definitely not twisted. You reach up between the lining and the thing, and you reach through the sleeve, and you're aiming to grab this pin piece here. Don't get Pull it through. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to disrupt anything because this is how you don't get an over sleeve. So you find your pin, which is there. Mm -hmm. You take your pin out and hold onto this carefully. So now you pin the wrong sides together, sorry, the right sides together all the way around, matching up the edges, and then sew it by the inch. And trust me, I know that the turn up is, is less, but when we press it, you'll then tack it into place. Catherine says, I reckon the standard Kindle is a good stand in for a seditious pamphlet. Yes, my pockets are not big enough for a Kindle, my little Kindle. No, uh, Catherine, I read that one. Jacob Clear says, While well, cats in space are better than dolphins, lol, <laughs> though they did make a movie about a cat from outer space. They did. Oh, I haven't seen the new Marvels movie yet either, but apparently the Flurkins are out in mass and I need to see it so. Yes, um, but no, the dolphins, if, if the dolphins leave, we know we're screwed. So long and thanks for all the fish. I so so this thing, yes. Hopefully, but you do. So you wanna have the coat side down, lining side up, because that's the way that it's pinned. So at five eighths of an inch, don't catch anything that you shouldn't and just sew around in a circle. And then when you pull it through, it will be bagged out for you because you can do this by hand. But if you can do it by machine, why wouldn't you? Mm. It's my motto and I'm sticking to it. I think that's one of the reasons I haven't um, attempted the black snail waistcoat that Jennifer got me for the pattern swap yet because um, there's a lot of hand sewing in that because it's a Victorian pattern. And I do want to do it. But there is a lot of hand sewing. And I have to be in the mood for that. Okay, so let's trim this other side. So let's trim it. It will try and stab you. Yes. Uh, Joker Clue says it had McQueen, Stevenson, Harry Morgan, Ken Berry, and Sandy Duncan. That movie was a riot. Well, I don't know any of those people. Erica says, hello, late, but I'm, but hey, um, I'm watching part of the live hangout. It's been a while, toddler life. Hello. Canary says, the stitchery is a big fan of huge pockets as she made secret pants with pockets big enough to put a cute kitty in logs. Yes, I did watch her um, reel the other day or her short the other day where she was seeing how much stuff she could fit in her pockets of her latest um, wraparound skirt, like multi-sized skirt. Her knit dress that she's made into that hooded dress, I, I kind of want to make myself one of those. It looks amazing with those sleeves. And I had that pattern. Mm. 
Nobody connected. There's so much dreaming. Still got to do the neckline. Um, I gave up the neckline. Oh, I've done the neckline. That was good of me. So just the hem to do now. And it keeps trying to unplug you. This coat is not your fan. Come on, I hate this coat. Oh, right. Where did I get to? Do chat. Erica says, Hubby is downstairs with our daughter and I'll be and I'll be stealing a little time to work on a winter coat. I don't want her to act right before it's ready. <gasps> no, and how cute. Jojo says to Anara, yes, the purse pockets, they were good. I love that she put multiple pockets in as well. It's like there was pockets for pocket, you know, like she had giant pockets, mum. But then she also put pockets inside of those for specific things, like, yeah. like your phone and your pen, yeah, and so that the giant sensible. pockets weren't, yeah. I liked those. Oh, yeah. You don't like pockets and things, so you take them off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have it both ways. <laughs> right, so that's... Okay, now pull the coat through carefully from the right side. Pull the arm through. Yeah, yeah. Turn it over. Reach inside. Reach, uh. Yes, there you go. Pull it through. And then we'll press it and you can top stitch it. So pull it through. Keep going. Here you go, it's finished. Ta -da! Magic. It is casting. I know. Oh, oh, no. I'll press it later. But it's finished, so you've done it. Yeah. So then when you work out how short you want it, you press it. Mm. And you yeah, yeah. Can you remember? Can you do the other side without me telling you exactly what to do? Don't say it in there. But there was dots and things. Yeah, you said you didn't want those. No, I don't. So, right. You're done. It's the right length. Yes. <laughs> okay. I took the inch out for you. I okay. redrafted the pattern for you. Very good. Can you remember how to do that for the other side now? That's very clever. Yes, it is. I've done a whole video on it. It looks really good. It does. <laughs> do you remember how it went? Mm -hmm. Done. Let me turn you around so that we can we can we can <laughs> witness this together. <laughs> no. No, can't abandon them. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, so it's all straight. Yeah. Not twisted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I get a little bit. So I would I would aim for a seam because yeah. that way you're seam. making sure it's not twisted. Seam. A little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like that, yeah, and then pin it, yeah. Are those seams matching? I think so. Which one's there and one's there? So, no, we don't leave both ones. There we go. You pin it horizontally so that it really won't stab you, or at least to real yeah. theoretically, it won't stab you. Theoretically. Like that, yeah. No, that's vertically. Oh, I see. It's all right. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. um, I would pin it from the lining side, mm -hmm. um, just that's my usual way of doing it. Yes, it's just... Okay, mm -hmm. in, in the line. Yeah, pull it back through. No, 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 no. no. Got between the layers, remember? Ah, between. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She says this about every coat that she makes, okay? Hold on to the pin so it doesn't stab you. It doesn't come out. That's important as well. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Pull through. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. It's very clever. Okay. Right. So, so, yeah, holding everything together, carefully remove the pin. You should be able to see it the head of the pin there. So hold, make sure you're holding everything together. Remove the head of the pin. Okay, and now just pin everything together and sew it five eighths of an inch. Yes. Yes. 
And at that time, I would use vertical pins rather right. than horizontal because of the way, yeah, although don't stab yourself. Okay. okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Yes. Oh. And then you can try it on and we'll turn the cuff up the amount you want and then you press it and then you top, you go in and you stitch the seams together, the um, seam allowances. Words are hard. I know what I mean. And if you can't get what I mean by then, I, 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 we just don't speak the same language. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Let's see. Joker Clee says, you better make your pockets big enough for a proper towel then, lol. <laughs> yeah. Did you see, um, oh, her name was Helen, wasn't it? That she made a towel jacket for her sister for um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Day. I thought that was brilliant. Catherine says, or at least a bottle of Prosecco. Joker Clee says, no, 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 you need a proper wig for a bottle of Prosecco, lol. <laughs> <laughs> and Ari says uh, to Jojo she wore the pants to a concert Joker Clee says McLean Stevenson was Colonel Henry Blake and Hen Harry Morgan was Colonel Sherman T. Potter both, both late of MASH lol oh, I never got into MASH um, so mum knows who you're talking about uh, Nimue says I have Sean and Stitchery made me do it projects on my list bought and made the McCall's dress years ago because of Sean but all her hacking inspired me to turn it into a pinafore nice. come autumn I will shop for enough fabric for a hooded maxi version of the next for next winter yeah I love that grey and purple maxi one with the hood Jojo says Inari she did didn't she it was Beyonce I think because her husband worked for her or something like that uh, and Ari says the stitchery is another person after my heart, pocket wise. I could put my entire junk mail into my pocket and still have enough room for my keys. Jojo says, I want one of the stitchery hood addresses too. So cozy. You can't remember the blooming name though. Um, Ch it's Charlie, it's ringing bells, isn't it? I've got no idea what her name is, to be honest with you. Um, one of the hints or things that I saw about having a YouTube channel was to not introduce yourself every video, to assume, to make it seem like people knew who you were and just you were welcoming, welcoming them back, which is why I don't introduce myself at the beginning of every video. Um, I don't know if that still holds true, but I took, that was that was a while ago. Um, but yeah, I, Charlie rings bells as well, but I'm not sure. And Joker Clee saying, it's, yes, it's Charlie. That's good. Joker Clee says, my wife bought me what they call a concealed carry coat, and it's got more pockets than a DD and d bag of holding. Lol. Nice. Um, Olivia says, the cat from outer space. I haven't seen that movie for decades. Now I have to see what streaming service has it. I have a concealed carry purse. Uh, Inari says, I thought the Stitchery was a Taylor Swift fan. Then again, it's, it goes to show what I know. Apparently, not much. Oh, interesting. Sometimes my sheer brainlessness astounds me. I really, I've been watching a lot of people make a lot of Taylor Swift out, um, outfits, and I really want to do one, but I don't want to do like a direct copy of any of her specific um, era's tour outfits. I was thinking I'd do like an inspired by one. Um, I think I showed you guys these shoes as well. I was talking, we were talking about this before. Um, I wanted to uh, do an outfit inspired by a pair of irregular choice shoes because we all know that I love irregular choice shoes. And there's a particular pair that I found on eBay and I was gutted that I didn't buy them at the time. And then they've gone on eBay, um, but they've been listed again. There we are. And I'm so tempted. But I also think that you could like do an amazing era's tour outfit around the, these shoes. I think that would be very, very cool. And I think that would make a really good video. Um, I think they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And there, there's loads of colorways, but this is the colorway I love the most. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that I would like to try and do. I haven't got tickets to the era's tour. My um, sister-in-law and niece have, I'm very jealous. They're going to see, they're in Glasgow, I think. I think it's Glasgow.
that's what I did on Christmas Day actually when mum and dad went to um, their friends to play cards and have Christmas dinner I made myself a grazing platter and I watched the Eras tour and it was very nice being able to pause it and get up and go because it's three hours long so. Yeah, so you turn it all the way back through. Okay. Right, so now you need to turn the coat back in inside, inside out again. That will be a finishing thing that we get to pressing those, those down. So turn it back inside out so you can have the right sides together. With the sleeves. Inside, yeah. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, because you need to finish sewing up the outer edge now. So you need to pin all the way around and sew the, re the remaining outer edge. Do I put all the sleeves? No, the sleeves? Just, just don't catch them in the stitching. Right. Very important. Don't do that. But the sleeves stay inside. That's why you um, opened up that hole in the lining to turn it through in a second. Just down to the bottom. All, and the bottom, all the way around. And the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way around. You can draw on your stitching line at the corners at the bottom if you want to. <laughs> now that you know what that means. <laughs> Olivia says, I like seeing inspired by way better than direct copy of an outfit. I like to see what creative ways people sew through um, inspiration. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I'm really impressed with watching people um, do their era's tour outfits. And there's some really interesting ones with the Roberto Cavalli Midnight Suit. Um, there's one person who's actually tambour beading it, which I would imagine is how Roberto Cavalli did that one. I think it's Roberto Cavalli that did the Midnight's Bodysuit. I think I've got that right. Um, yeah, it would be really interesting um, seeing all the different, because there's loads of people who are going the hot fix crystal root and, and gluing and things like that. So seeing somebody tambour bead it was really um, quite interesting. But it's, um, you know, her ringmaster... Um, look that she did as well um, which is I can't remember which era that's from but I can those those boot those little booties I can see something along those kind of lines Lisa says, oh, son sending abusive messages, blaming me for him losing his kids. Thank gosh. The block button. I'm finally back. What are you making, Sean? Coat update with, um, what are you making, Sean? Um, uh, yeah, I'm just working on my coat. And yes, block button is made for those kinds of instances. Catherine says, coat update with sleeves on the Peeps group. And she'll have a look in a second. Uh, Joker Clee says, could be worse. Lol, a theatre chain here a few years ago decided that they needed to do a full run of Lord of the Rings movies, the full uncut version, back to back, before, just before The Hobbit came out. Wow. Like I always wanted to go the Prince Charles Cinema just off of um, Oxford Circus. No, um, not Oxford Circus. Leicester Square um, used to do movie marathons like that. They would put together loads of different ones. And they do, like, um, beer and pizza night. So Dad and I went to watch – oh, we went to watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Um, and I can't remember what, what it was, but we got a slice of pizza and a beer with it as well. It was that kind of like place and they had the old leather bucket seats. Went to see the Princess Bride there. Um, and also went to a couple of the Labyrinth ones, which is brilliant. They give you a little bag with, and you go to see Labyrinth and there's um, a peach sweet in it and bubbles and a firecracker and then some, uh, you know, like a party popper kind of thing. Um, that you do at specific points during the movie. Um, so I, used to, I loved those. I did that for my birthday one year. 
and then another one was the room the um oh what's his name why sale they've made a movie about the movie it was it was so terrible it became a cult movie and I didn't know this at the time and I'd heard about it so I booked back row seats because I was just like if this is truly awful I want to be able to sneak out um, and leave but we went to see it and everybody else there had been so many times before and there was things that you do so uh, the set director um well, the set decorator for this movie, I mean, this is the lowest budget B movie you've ever seen in your life. If you haven't seen The Room, it's hilarious. Um, but the the set, de uh, set decorator had bought uh, photo frames from the local kind of like TK Maxx or something. And they'd come with um, pictures of spoons in them, like, you know, like standard stock photos and just of spoons for some reason. And... So the thing is, whenever you see that photo frame in in shot, you throw plastic spoons at the screen. And then there's a couple of scenes where they um, play rugby. So they used to play rugby, have throw rugby balls back and forth across the aisles. But they kind of asked people to stop that because it got a little too exuberant. Um, but there's also a cutaway scene where they'd obviously spent money on a, a scene that had been filmed by a professional photographer, uh, pro pro professional um, camera crew, and they they bought this clip, and it was the um, background of Seattle. I, th I think it's Seattle. And whenever that came up, because they used it every single cut scene, it was like, meanwhile in Seattle, <laughs> is that is everybody in the audience said it. And the movie is truly, truly, truly terrible. It's so, so, so bad. But the audience participation at this cinema just made it amazing. Um, but they used to do marathons of like, you know, watch all the Harry Potter movies or watch all the Marvel movies. And you could bring a sleeping bag and you could bring a certain amount of food and snacks in as well. And I really, really wanted to do one of those. But my ex was just like, no, I've done I've done one of those. And it was truly terrible. I absolutely hated it. I just didn't like the experience. It was uncomfortable and I didn't want to do it. So I never actually got around to doing it while I lived in London. Um, so yeah that was one thing I do regret because even if it had been truly terrible it would have been nice to just go and do it and they always did a photo at the end like, like three or four five six in the morning depending on how long the stream had been and um, there would be like a, a last you know, standing survivors kind of a, and everybody was in their pjs with their sleeping bag kind of thing um, but yeah I, that's one thing I would have liked to have done um, Olivia, I can see Olivia's just asking what movie I'm talking about. It's the, the Room, and then they did James Franco did a movie about the movie. <laughs> Eddie Eddie Wiseau, I think it is. Oh, it's just a truly terrible movie. Lisa, you're tearing me apart. <laughs> yeah. But if you could find a cinema that will do an interaction, interactive like um, experience like that, it's really it's it's one of those bad movies that's good kind of thing because of the audience participation. <laughs> uh, and Ari says big hugs for Lisa. Joker Police says buddy of mine went, and he said it was fourteen and a half hours of hobbity goodness, though it took eighteen hours to get through it because of all the bathroom breaks needed. Lol. Yeah, I can imagine. Julie Elizabeth says, I don't like to go to live events or movies in the theatre anymore. I'm five foot one and eventually a tall person is seated in front of me and I hardly ever get to see anything at all. Oh, yeah, that's no good. And you can't wear like giant high heels because that's uncomfortable. Uh, Nimue says, all ends woven in means I've officially completed half of all the squares I need for my rose garden jacket. Yay, I'm doing 80, not 61 in the pattern because I don't want it cropped or three quarter length sleeves. I really got to pull my finger out and start to learn to crochet, haven't I? Jojo says, oh no, Lisa, I'm so sorry. Sending hugs and gentle hugs. Sending hugs, gentle hugs. Laurel says, our neighbor is near the stadium where T. Swift performed in Chicago. We were awash with very sparkly people um, looking for restaurants before the concert, I can imagine. Uh, Lisa says, thanks, eating soup and toast now. Mm, tomato soup. Um, Nimoy says, a local cinema used to do a Star Trek marathon every time before a new movie came out. I desperately wanted to go, but my parents wouldn't allow it. I came of age and they closed, still kind of gutted. Oh, no. I remember going to see um, Breaking Dawn Part 1 and then Breaking Dawn Part 2 was aired at midnight. And it was in the um, 
Blackfriars Cineworld. So it was on it was on the Max, like three the largest screen. And I went I went by myself because like nobody was going to come with me to that. Um, and watching, I thought they did the movie really well because the book, obviously, it, it, there's a huge battle scene and this stuff happens. And you're just like, oh my god, how? What is going on? And um, so yeah, the, watching it live for the first time before, like when it had literally come out a minute ago, that was really fun. I enjoyed that. So, what are you doing? <laughs> Mum's looking at me. What, what's going on? Oh, you need drugs. <laughs> Coat, coat making gives you headaches. Maybe we won't do this anymore. Oh. <laughs> Mum's sitting in the corner swearing. Um, yeah, the Prince Charles Cinema. Also, um, you could pay £50 for a membership for a year. Um and it got, I think it was like half price tickets to everything and loads of invites to things and first refusal on things as well. And I was just like, mm, yeah, yeah. I really, really, that's uh, that's one thing I do miss about London is the easy access to sushi <laughs> and fun places like that. So, yeah. Um, Professor Pudge says Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's one that's popular on campus as an audience participation. I have never been to see Rocky Horror Picture Show live. Um, I really want to. The Prince Charles Cinema do do that one as well, but it was always fully booked. Um, so, yeah. I would love to do that. That would be very cool. Um, Catherine says, was the movie about the movie one with Johnny Depp? No. And um, it was called The Room. Let me see if I can get a picture up of it. It's kind of like this cult following. San Francisco. Meanwhile in San Francisco, that was what it was. That's the lead character. He's the guy who like he starred in it, he financed it, he wrote it, he directed it, he did all the things. Um, and then they turned it into Tommy Wiseau. Oh, what's his name? They turned they made they made a movie about the movie, and it was um, James Franco who played it would help if I could type room there we go Tommy Wiseau <laughs> just is so 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 bad <laughs> yeah um and then, like I say, James Franco was in the remaking of it. Let's see what that's called. The des uh, yeah. Uh, the Disaster Artist. That's what the that's what the movie about the movie was called. The Disaster Artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Um, Olivia says, I'm teaching myself to knit. It's going slow. I can just about knit a straight line. I still need a lot of help with that. Lisa says, Sean, I'm eating tomato soup. Oh, I really want tomato soup. I'm on my toast now. Nimue says to Olivia, learning to knit is on my list for this year. Sucks that I struggle to find a YouTuber whose tutorials work for me because that would help me out a lot. Uh, Lisa says, let's dance, let's do the time warp again. <laughs> uh, Joker Clee says, never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, I've seen The Little Shop of Horrors a couple of times though. Fade Missy more. I love little, um, little Shop of Horrors. The dresses that she wears in that movie, that red one with the roses and the neckline, I want to make that. Uh, Joker Clee says, got to love Rick Moranis, <laughs> yeah. Lisa says to Joker Clear, suddenly Seymour is standing beside you. I love that. I love that movie. 
Joe quickly says calls in napalm strike. Inari says release a soup with toast hits the spot rather nicely, hopefully followed by a steaming warm beverage of your choice. Elisa says, yeah, or it will have coffee shortly. Nice. Joe quickly says, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It smells like victory. My favorite one was the dentist. Steve Martin is the dentist. Just... I'll be your dentist. <laughs> I can't sing, but I love them. So um, the last night of the retreats, we always have a pizza and PJ night. And we've watched um, Labyrinth and Little Shop of Horrors. And one year we watched um, the latest episode of The Sewing Bee because that was on that night. And um, last time we actually didn't watch anything because we just kind of like over sort of binge watch the king's coronation because the that happened just happened to happen the weekend that the retreat was being was being held and they very kindly put tvs everywhere for us didn't they so you could watch it in every room mm. that's good yes. you missing one I've got Little Shop of Horror songs going on in my head now. I've got what? Little Shop of Horror songs right going around in my head. It's one of those movies that I watch at least once a year. Like Labyrinth and The Princess Bride. I remember taking Dad to see The Princess Bride at the Prince Charles Cinema and he'd never seen it before and he didn't know what I was talking about. Oh, I was just what? like... I don't know how I, it came into my life then I don't know. because I I just love that movie I don't think we've watched that at the retreat maybe we'll watch that at the May retreat I currently have five people booked another person has shown interest but they've not replied to the email I need eight people for it to go ahead so fingers crossed fingers crossed we love people to come because we enjoy it we do. Okay, so all the trimming is done. Now I've got to unpick the seam that I sewed to get in and out of this because at the moment this is not a coat. This is something that is not get in and outable of. I've got to find the seam that I picked. Which seam did I pick? Not that one, not that one, not that one. This one, here it is. I've got I'll be your dentist floating around in my head now. Still, now you've got men in tights going on in that don't i haven't watched that in ages either um joke Klee says as you wish yeah hello my name is inigo montoya you killed my father prepare to die Apparently, that is the best choreographed and, and enacted fencing scene in cinematic history. Um, it's been highly, highly praised, and it does look very good because they're actually fencing rather than just like whacking each other with, with, with swords. And it didn't occur to me. I've watched Criminal Minds I don't know how many times, and it didn't even cross my mind that Mandy Patikin is the same person as an ego, and I just it was like mind blown when I when I finally worked that out. <laughs> Lisa says I love labyrinths. You remind me of a babe. What babe? Babe with a power. What power? Uh Lisa says my eldest grandson Toby was named after Toby from the movie. Oh cool. The I told you I went to the labyrinth uh, to yeah labyrinth 
um, screening for my birthday and they had a fancy dress costume and the person that won was the person who came dressed as Toby. He had gone on the London Underground in a, a red and white striped onesie. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, it was so funny. But yeah, there was some amazing costumes, but Toby won. Yeah. Catherine says for Kerry, you I can never say his last name, fans. Men in Tights is currently on Amazon Prime. Done. That's my evening's entertainment. Um, Olivia says, Mimoe, I started watching so many YouTube videos and I think it's confusing me, but Sheep and Stitch has a how to cast on knitting for total beginners video. I'm thinking this one might be might help me. Uh, the real uh, uh, Three Stitch Cattery, I always want to call you something else, and you did tell me what your name is, and I'm so sorry, I've already forgotten. It says, try very pink knits for tutorials. Good knowledge, you guys. Um, Joker Key says, I saw a picture of a Cali licensed plate yesterday with uh, what, um, uh, <laughs> YKMFPTD, and the fancy trim pieces around it had a banner under it. It says, my name is Amigo Mike. <laughs> A name that said the oh, words the fancy trim pieces around it had a banner under it that said my name is Amigo Mantoya you killed my father Perfecto da. lol I love her Lisa says oh thank you Catherine I shall watch that later women women in tights yes I cannot sing I should stop Joker Clear says oh Master Robin I'm sorry you lost your arm in the war but you don't but did you grow a nice set of boobs <laughs> I haven't watched that in ages. Laurel says, I once told my husband, have fun storming the castle as he left the apartment. And he said, huh? Which made me question our whole relationship. Lol, absolutely. <laughs> A nice MLT, mutton lettuce and the mutton. <laughs> oh no, we've started. Um, Gig Racer says, Joker, please, that may be the best number play ever. I know, right? I, yeah. Catherine says, now wrangling eight meters of facing. Good luck. Cat, uh, uh, three stitch Cattery says, Erin. Erin, thank you, Erin. Thank you, Erin. Because <laughs> I always struggle with your name. I want to call you something else, and it's not that. Susan says, the labyrinth dress is amazing. I would love to make it. I think I'm going, I, I think I'm born in the wrong era. If I could wear big ball gowns all the time, I would. I want to make both of those outfits. I want to make his coat, the blue coat with all the gems on it, and I want to make her dress. Lisa says, we're butch. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen him in so long. And Gig Racer says, and now I have the Men in Tights song on repeat in my head. Lol, Olivia says, me too. <laughs> Earworms for everybody. Okay. Who's ready to birth the coat? Through a teeny tiny little, a little hero. Uh, yeah. So I was watching SEAL Team on my Now TV subscription and I'd actually cancelled it because I was like, oh, there's nothing I really want to watch at the moment, so I won't. So I cancelled it and then they made, they made me a whole bunch of offers because it was £10 a month and they were like how about you have it for £6 a month and I still cancelled it and they were like okay how about £4 per month and I said no and I went back in to see what offers I've got because I've only I'm on season five of the seven that there are of SEAL team and they're like yeah you said no to us before so £9.99 a month and I'm like oh, oh, oh. I want to finish watching the film so I will wait until they send me offers because they always send me offers. But I am halfway through season five and I've left it on a cliffhanger and I'm annoyed. But never mind, it will be fine. Okay. Purple Fang, Corner Poking. So, uh, with coat seam grading, you kind of want to actually grade the inner seam more than the outer seam. You're just doing both, which is fine. But for the next coat, you stagger it. So what you're doing now is grading seams, right? Yeah. Okay. So usually on coats, you will grade the inner seam. So you'll only cut that one. You can you cut them both down and then you cut the inner seam down even more so that they like stagger. So one's shorter than the other. Don't worry about that now because you've gone through and already started. But, yeah. 
So much coat. Oh, Nara says, I have completed a little over 51% of my friend's pet, my friend's pet's parent blanket. Providing I can stay on track, I should be able to give it to her on her 76th birthday. Oh, that's lovely. Joker, please, breaks out some Pennsylvania 6, 6 5000 and Moonlight Sonata. Okay. Is that, I don't, that one's gone over my head. That reference has gone over my head. Nimoy says to Olivia, I might have, might give her a look. My problem is that my mum taught me some basics when I was younger and there are many, so many alternatives that it confuses me. Mm. Yeah. Because lots of people write in different languages as well, for, and, and like literally in English, but then like Canadian knitting and American yeah, knitting. And, it's really weird. Yeah. Uh, Erin says, This is a trip down memory lane, a never ending story. I loved all these movies. <gasps> oh, I love that movie as well, but when. Uh, uh, oh, what's the horse, the horse's name? Ar Artex? Arfax? When the horse dies. Oh, it's supposed to be a kid's movie. Ah, horrifying. Lisa says, Inari, how old is your friend now? I have men in tights lined up on the laptop ready to watch after the live. Nice. Nene says, skirt done two now. Hepburn skirt pencil version by Gertie. Love it. Lovely. Inari says, which is almost at the end of March. My friend will give her fur baby blanket for her cute little dog as well. Nice. Uh, Aaron says, look up tin can knit patterns, simple collection, all free and designed to teach knitting. I was taught when I was 12. It was in the days of knitting, was taught one to one. Linnea says, wish for a video, tips and tricks when sewing coats. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Lisa says, Inari says, for Lisa, my friend is going to be 76 years old this coming birthday. Um, March towards the end of the month. Jake Cleese says, lol, the songs from Captain Glenn Miller and his orchestra from Big Band Era, lol, thank you. And Olivia says to Erin, thank you, just Googled it. And um, I absolutely love Big Band music. Yeah, me and um, uh, the guy I was seeing last summer, we stumbled upon a big band playing in the R Ralston Gardens, which was lovely. Um, so we kind of just sort of like set up our picnic there, watched them. It's about a nice time. I do it every week. Would you though? Mm -hmm. It was very enjoyable. Now, do I have to sew those bits together? So I turn it through now, do I? Yeah, I do. Not sure if it's everything. So I'm lining to coat. Here we go. Do I need to do? Yes, I need to do that bit. I haven't done that bit. That was stupid of me. Never mind. I was chatting to you guys too much and got confused. What have we done? I just need to sew something to something. But I will do that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to try it on. Please bear in mind that it's not remotely pressed, so it's not going to look amazing quite yet because it's not been pressed, but I will try it on. Um, Lisa says, this is such a lovely distraction. So grateful for this live, Sean. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm glad we can be distracting. Joker Please says, Mrs. Joker Please says that she wants to buy the movie rights to The Life of Sean so we can do it up like The Life of Brian, but with yeah. a modern twist. <laughs> She's been a very naughty boy. <laughs> okay. I'm taking my cardigan off. It will fit over my cardigan. I just, like I say, it's not pressed yet and I don't want to fight it on over my cardigan. Inari says, for Lisa, I slightly misunderstood your question. My friend is still currently three quarters of a century old. And Lisa is um, says, 
<laughs> I'm Brian, and so this is and and so this is my wife. <laughs> I haven't watched the life of Brian in decades. A very long time. So yes, please, people, bear in mind that um, this coat is not pressed and it needs a good like hour of pressing mm. oh you can't see the pockets that's good can you can, can you can you i don't think you can but it needs it really does need pressing obviously everywhere um, but I really like the cuffs. There's something I added. I'm going to put a little button there. So yes, don't don't judge it too harshly because it needs pressing. But yeah, snakes, snakes on snakes, <laughs> many snakes. But um. Ugh. I still have quite a little, lot of finishing work to do for that and all of the pressing which is going to be fun I could say it's a good hour's worth of pressing there if I want to do this properly and then I need to make some self-covered buttons and I have those and then the press studs they're arriving on Wednesday so I can then finish the coat up but I need to sew the neck edge together underneath which is not going to be the most fun I've ever had and then I need to um, once this is pressed I then need to tack the facing to the interlining um, I need to tack the cuffs on although they are staying up by themselves pretty well um, yeah so lots of lots of finishing work but I love how pretty the insides is and that pop of yellow is really lovely I'm really excited about this collection. I think it's going to be it's going to be a good one. Um, yes, and then I went for slippery stuff for the for the sleeves. I stole these cuffs from a butterick pattern. But yeah. Given how little fabric I had, I'm glad that I got this coat out of it. Because this is definitely something that I will wear as opposed to like trying to make a trench coat work. So you have to try yours on quickly, mum, even though yours isn't remotely pressed or finished. Mm -hmm. I really like the combination of colours. Mm, it's nice, isn't it? Yes. I'm glad I made you go for the bright lining rather than black. She wanted to get a very boring lining for her coat and was having none of it. I'm like, nope, no, no, no. Kind of gold with orange. No, the ones you were looking at were dark brown and black. Really? Yes. Oh. They didn't have this was the name. <gasps> okay. So stop fucking with it, put it on. Because <laughs> we're gonna go on the one. Well, I, I know I haven't pressed mine either. Oh. Yeah, the sleeves aren't, aren't sorted yet, and it's not pressed. And does it look a bit? Okay, it looks like an unpressed coat, but if you start fiddling with it, <laughs> she's trying to pull all the stray threads and things off. Again, not pressed. Not remotely pressed. She wants to put a martingale on the back. She made me take all the other bits and pieces off that were interesting, but she wants a martingale, so I was like, okay. Got big pockets. And then the orange lining. 
but it's yeah. griffins it is griffins we've got both of us got lots of um lots of finishing work to do on both of our coats i think what do you think yeah good maybe i'm gonna knock it it is great so yeah that's the shoulders can you move your arms yeah they look fine but they all need pressing. Right. Okay. You can take it off now and finish fiddling with it. And get pressing. <laughs> well, yeah, because there's now a cue for the... That's the trouble. We've both finished at the same time. There's a cue for the, for the ironing board now. You can do it first. It's fine. Do I um, sew them? Not yet. Not yet. Do all the pressing first, just in case you have to get in... No, because you have to tack your um, hem facing down as well. So you need to press everything first. Just press. Well... Yes. Okay. Why did I get two of the chat? Uh, Erin says, when I was a little girl, I remember my mum getting dressed up in beautiful dresses to go dancing with my dad to the big band music. Such a nice memory. It was so enchanting how beautiful my mum looked. Oh. Joshua says, Sean is not the Messiah. She's a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Joker Cleese is rolling on the floor laughing his ass off. Olivia says, Erin, I just downloaded that app, sounds promising. Uh, Lisa says, Sean, it's beautiful. Catherine says, nice. The coat is, my, is cute from Nimue. Linnea says, looks great. Good Grace says, so stunning. Joker Cleese says, snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> I like that. Um, there's a um, Indiana Jones reference, right? Laurel says looks good. Lisa says I like that the sleeve lining is plain. It's also more slippery than the um, snake. Catherine says there's a reason why I'm putting the facing on separately and understitching it and before attaching the hem facing to the coat. I um before I put the lining on like a hand I like hand sewing though. You can do all those things and still bag it out. You could still um do all those things, put the facing on, do the understitching, and you could still bag the coat out afterwards and so the lining on by machine i know you like hand stitching but you could still back it out if you wanted to um laurel says oh yes the yellow flat piping is is fabulous i know right i'm really pleased with how that's come out that little pop and then and then my little label i only ever put labels in coats because i hate labels in clothes they bug me um but i do have a bunch of these from the dutch label company and i probably will actually buy some more because I've, I've got three left and i'm going to make more than three more coats much. You don't want the kittenish behavior behavior label in your coat, do you? You have to buy a minimum amount. Probably, well, it, I don't know, but I'll have a look. Do you want labels in all of your clothes or just your coats? Because I tend to cut labels out of coats. Yeah. Okay, so the reason that pressing should take about an hour, Mum, is because you're meant to press an area. And then use the clapper and hold the clapper still until the wool wool is um, cold. So what you're doing now is not the correct method. You can carry on doing it anyway, though. <laughs> oh, who asked for tips? Uh, uh, Linnea, you asked for tips and tricks for making a coat. Mum's going to tell you, don't do it with me in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm overbearing and annoying. <laughs> Why are you continuing to do it when I've just told you that's not the way? But I just did it right. No, you I didn't. Do that. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Okay. So this is still warm. So you want to bring your iron over. Steam, 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 steam. Yeah. And then hold this down like that mm -hmm. and keep it still until it's not, not hot anymore. Really roll those, those things. <laughs> I mean, really, really, you should press them open first and then... Well, I had pressed everything. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's going to say, don't let me be in the room with you when you make a coat. That's going to be her top tip. <laughs> Olivia says, beautiful dress, Sean. Thank you. Nimue says, also look, had a look at Ting Han, but annoyingly, as with so many knitters, I can't easily find anywhere which style they use. I learned Continental originally and want to stick with it. Um, Laurel says, ooh, nice. Lisa says, mum, you look very smart. And Nimue says, great coat, number two. And Olivia says, my husband walked in and said, oh, tell Shan hi. You're the only one that I watch that he knows. Uh, usually he'll walk in, sit down and, and ask, can we watch anything else? <laughs> hi, Olivia's husband. Linnea says, very nice to you, mum. Jojo says to Nimue, is Norman of Nimble Needles any help to you? He knits continental style and I really like his teaching style. Olivia says, very nice, Jane. Few Grace says, uh, lovely too. Looks wonderful on you, Jane. Petter says, that's a lovely fit. It is indeed. Uh, Joker Clee says, very nice, Mom. Me likey, and that colour looks good on you too. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, Michelle says, love the coat. That's gorgeous. Nimue says to Jojo, I'll have a look. I kept searching for continental knitting basics so often, coming up with 95% stuff completely wrong, so I gave up. So much for tagging and algorithms. <laughs> Olivia says Indiana Jones. Yes, Erin says uh, terms between continental and throwing are the same. It's not like crochet where the UK, where there is UK US. Tin Van Knits shows how garments are constructed and then get you working in the round. Um, Inara says nice indeed. Michelle says I love coats, but I get to wear one. Nice ones like three weeks a year. Layering is not the thing in summertime in Bermuda, like May to October. <laughs> no, living in that particular part of the world and a heavy wool coat is not going to be the thing. Um, Olivia says, I love the interaction between you and your mum. <laughs> Carol says, for pressing or take to the dry cleaners for a, pre for a pre professional press. Yes, I want to do that with my red one and this one. Uh, Erin says the thing that can change between two styles is tension. Throwers, flickers can be more to gauge, but continental style can be a little looser. I knit both, so it's good to learn both for ergonomics. Julie Elizabeth says I tried number needles for knitting. Love those co those coats. Thank you. Nimoy says knitting terms don't matter if nobody shows me how to actually make a stitch or how to count my rows and stuff. I need the anatomy. I will never learn. My brain doesn't work that way. And Julie Elizabeth says nimble needles, not number needles. I thought number needles sounded quite cool. Carol says congenital, uh, congenital is picking, English is throwing. Continental is picking, English is throwing. It does say congenital. I'm not being completely strange, but <laughs> I think you mean continental. And Ari says the reason why I prefer to make my own clothes is because I don't like labels in my clothes. Labels are annoying. Some labels are scratchy. Ouch. Yeah, no, I cut, if I, when I used to buy clothes, I used to cut them all out. Catherine says, I like sneaky external labels. You do. I love the, the um, this is not for sale that you've got on your pocket of your coat that you're currently making. And Carol says, dance spell check. I know, how dare it? <laughs> I have had a lovely three and a half hours with you guys. Oh my goodness, we have waffled a lot. But look, sewing happened. An actual sewing that I said was going to happen happened. Um, thank you very much for hanging out with me this afternoon. It has been a lot of fun. And you will be seeing the finished coats, plural, because I will get mum to model hers for the um, Patreon peeps um, for the, the waffle next week. Fingers crossed, things will be back to normal next week and I will have videos and Zoom calls and waffles and everything up for you guys. Um, we shall do that. Uh, <laughs> Joker Clee says, auto cucumber strikes again, lol. <laughs> Ducky Autocorrect, it was one of my favourite websites. I used to read that in the break room when I was working at Playboy and I would sit there laughing out loud and people would look at me like I was totally crazy and then have to pass my phone around so everyone else could see what I was laughing at. It's such a funny website. Erin uh, says to Nimue, uh, very pink, does both in slow motion. Got to run, everyone have a great day. And Jojo is laughing at Joker Clee's. Yes, thank you very, very much for hanging out with us today. It has been a lot of fun. I am going to continue working on this coat to get it finished today, and then I can start on the 9076 tomorrow, which I am very excited about. 
Mum's even picked out her fabric for her next one of those that she wants to make. So I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all then. Okay, bye.